Good evening. Got a full house tonight. I hear voices, so maybe we'll, we'll have a public hearing this evening. Uh, could review the minutes of April 10th, March 28th, and April 27th. And you have some executive session minutes there that we should go into executive session to approve. Word. <laughs> I'm sorry, what's that? You had us worried. <laughs> <laughs> Two more coming as well, so. I saw it. This earth is not going to be my friend anymore. I don't see the. Uh... <laughs> what? It's a motorcycle going away. Mm. That's what that noise was. Anyone care to make a motion on uh, any of the minutes before you? Of April 10th. April 10th. to accept the minutes as written. There are a couple typos, but I don't think that they're significant. Need to be corrected. Second. Um, I was... Uh, any discussion? 
Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain, just one, I wasn't present. Next, I have, uh, you want to go backwards, March 27th, 2017? Well, I got one, March 27th is... I don't have that, Mr. Chairman. Oh, the executive, you don't have March 27th? No, I don't have that one either. These are ones that were issued previously several times. Emails. Right? No, hard copies are handed out at the meetings as well. Is there a reason that... Um, yeah, February 23rd. March 27th. Yeah. Do you have the October 11th, 2016? Yeah. October 11th? Yeah. I have that. Those... October 11th weren't on the, uh, is not on the agenda. Is that one already approved? I don't know, it's still in my packet. Unsigned. Yeah, I, I have October 11th, 2016. I do too. I have approved on it. I wrote approved on the top of that. <coughs> Did you by chance put the date on? Um, I didn't, and I also have uh, approved well, maybe on this March twenty seventh. Maybe you have a signed copy already, and this was just left in my. Yeah, I think so. Might be the same on March twenty seventh, also. It is. Yeah, it's I, March March twenty eighth. The executive session is the one that, uh, on the agenda. Okay. February twenty third. February twenty third, March twenty eighth, and April twenty. Is executive session. Yep. Yeah. I was not there for that one. No. No. So I guess okay. April 27th is, that's also executive session, so. Right. So I guess that I guess that's all we have for minutes at, at the moment. That's good. Unless you choose to go into executive session to uh, vote on those. Uh, next up, we have the continued public hearing for site plan review. Fadi Zaknown, did I pronounce that properly? 2707 Cranberry Highway. I think we've met since your last changes. Here we go. Sure. Right. Good evening for the record, uh, John Churchill, JC Engineering. With me tonight is Brian Wallace. Uh, JC Engineering and uh, Brian Wall, uh, Attorney Brian Wall. Uh, this project uh, has been before you on a few occasions. Uh, this is an amendment to a special, uh, a site plan review actually, uh, back from uh, 2011. 
Um, we have a, a, a uh, site plan approval. Um, you have that in your records, and I'm sure you've heard this before. Um, so what we're proposing here uh, is a 7,400 square foot building, um, parking spaces. It's a retail establishment. It's what we call a contractor type um, yard, HVAC, plumber, electrician, um, a vinyl cider, a roofer, somebody that can store there um, in the overhead bays in the back, then get in, put their uh, you know roofing materials, put their ladders, uh, park their truck inside, and then have a little storefront so customers can come in, uh, people can visit, they can sit down with customers, they can sit down with clients, uh, potential purchase as well, um, depending on the, the actual use. Uh, for the uh, you know for the plumber or the HVAC uh, people, it's basically contractors is what we're trying to service here. Um, very typical in uh, Middleborough. If you go over the Middleborough line, go down 28, you'll see probably at least 10 of these buildings um, up. Uh, so we try to match. I know we had um, some changes from the last <clears throat> from the last meeting, so I can just over go through the uh, changes that we did. Uh, the entranceway has been moved to allow better access for the trucks. At, um, a uh, 20 scale template for a W50 design. Uh, plans were submitted to the fire chief and the fire chief has signed off on the plans. We did a, a vehicle turning, which we did uh, produce to the planning board department, uh, ve a vehicle turning uh, template uh, submitted to um, the Wayham Fire District and uh, that was uh, signed off on. Uh, the land safe island is located in the left corner of the building, has been removed and now designated as no parking area. Um, I think you might have a copy. This is a February 7th uh, memorandum. You might have a copy or not. Uh, the layout and the number of parking spots in the front has been revised. One spot was removed due to the widening of the entrance and two spots were removed to provide a backup area for vehicles. Uh, two spots were added due to the fire lane being removed as it was not needed to provide out, uh, fire access to the site. Overall, one parking spot was removed, but the parking schedule still meets the minimum requirements of the bylaw. All utilities on site have been revised. The plan now shows a two inch water service line with a curb stop located at the entrance. Each unit will be serviced individually one service line and a curb stop each line will be located along the front of the building on sheet 407 sees that the plan now shows a proposed utility pole that is connected via overhead wires to the existing utility pole on the other side of route 28 underground wires will run underground underground wires will run from that pole to a meter bank and will provide the building with telephone cable and electricity each unit will receive gas and electricity individually uh, sheet 407 shows gas meter bank and electric meter bank on the side of the building so each each tenant will have their own or um, services if you will so they can better manage. More information um, is provided regarding the site sign. A detail has been provided, sheet six of seven. That shows the overall dimensions and style of the proposed sign. The location can be found on sheet three of seven and shows that the sign conforms to the required 20 foot setback from the front property line. The revised entrance location resulted in changes to the overall impervious uh, surface area and drainage uh, area 1A, refer to the plan uh, drainage areas. The drainage facility for this uh, area has been revised accordingly. So we had to rerun uh, some calculations. Architectural plans have been revised to show color and improved facade. A granite split face block base wraps around three sides of the building and a green trim is utilized around the windows, doors and awning. A rendering of the proposed building, as you can see here in front, has also been included in this revision. Um, so the architect actually looked, there's th the, uh, the propane place, I believe it's like three units over, which has no brick at all. And then you have Atlantic Boats, which is halfway up the building on the front. Uh, so what we have here is we incorporated sort of the middle between the two. Uh, we don't believe it's, uh, you know, it, it it's fits in well with the area. Um, it looks good. Um, I believe that was a concern uh, of, of, of the last, last time we were here before, uh, before the board. So the architect went back to the drawing board and this is what, what he came up with. Um, so basically what we have here is, is by right use uh, for what we're doing. Uh, it's under site plan approval. Um, it's uh, the way we look at it, and I can let Mr. Wall elaborate even further, is that basically we have Mr. Raleigh's essential sign off on drainage. Um, it conforms to vehicular circulation, it conforms to uh, drainage requirements. We have all our permits in place. Um, you have a rendering in front of you. Um, this meets all the requirements. So what we have before you meets the letter of the law. Uh, we've spent numerous time um, getting to this point. Um, and we believe that this plan can be conditioned properly uh, from this board in order to allow Mr. Zach now to construct this building and move forward with this project. You finished your speed reading course. Excuse me? You finished your speed reading course? Yeah, you got it? I was hoping you had it, but I don't think you did because you weren't you didn't find it. Here it comes. We do. <laughs>
Uh, Charlie, your items five and six from the January 9th letter, is that included in the in your recommendations in this letter? February. I put some conditions in here. Uh, yeah, item item five on my February thirteenth letter. That's for five and six on the January nine letter. Mm -hmm. January 9th. The recommendation was that you incorporate those two things in. Reason being. Um, there are going to be specific uses that will end up being for each of these units. The design flow for the septic system is going to be based on some particular number. If it goes over that because of a change in use, then it could be a difference to the septic system is all I'm saying. We don't address the septic systems here. That is a Board of Health issue. I was simply suggesting that uh, it be made a part of the conditions of approval so that the total flow would not exceed uh, whatever is designed in the plan uh, irrespective of the use. So if these were if these are all contractor type you know tenants should be roughly the same as, as what would, uh, what would make could you be. what would concern you that it would change if they if they leased it to someone else? Uh, no, not unless unless the type of use as it's listed under Title 5 changes the flow criteria and you'd have to go into title five to look at it uh, I'm, I'm just throwing it up as something to consider in terms of the final approval that you've got a specific number for the flow okay. based on the assumption that there will be contractor bays if that changes in any way or, or say two bays get combined into one for one tenant the flow might change Questions for the board? Well, I, if, if you don't mind, I'll ask a few questions. Um, so one of the hearings previously, uh, you were here and, and we went over moving the driveway over, which I see you did. Um, John, during your explanation there, I, 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 I tried to listen as fast as I could. Um, the truck turned around in the back. It, it was a concern of mine. So the concern that I raised was twofold. I said, hopefully you can slide the driveway over, which you did, which would bring your traffic straight, kind of straight back instead of a big turn. Are we going to be able to turn the trailer around back there? So um, we have what we brought. entering um, the front lot and the rear lot and on the second sheet it shows it exiting the rear lot and the front lot. Um, I have two more copies. Yeah. All right, so, yeah, so we, we basically did the this emergency vehicle movement plan to, to submit and we submitted that to the William Fire District, uh, I believe uh, the fire chief and he should have, there should be a letter in the file that he reviewed this. We went back and forth a couple times with him. And um, as I said, we got to change a couple small, small details with uh, Landscape Island in the back there and a couple of small things to make sure that this fire truck can get around. But yes, now it, it's designed right. so it accommodates that fire truck, as you can see. Okay, so then the, then the other questions that I had at the time uh, were the, the face of the building. So instead of every building being up and down the street just being a metal space building, um, uh, you told me that they were going to put canopies on which which you did looking at that so the canopy is on the face of the building how far I mean I can't read the numbers from here sorry but mm -hmm. are the canopies proportional to the building John you know you're driving around are we going to get a little three-foot canopy on the face of that building that's 100 feet wide uh, the awning, we have a the hunter green awning that's there. Is that, is it? Yeah. Well, that, looking at the face of the building from the road, yeah. I mean, it's 100 feet wide, the building. You show a green awning there, and I see the awning sticking out uh, at the top, um, in you know, in between the face that you're showing there, the, that you're showing the, the, the side and the, both sides of the building. How big is the awning? 
It's five feet, shown from the side view, shows it as being five feet. Five feet uh, out. out. Extension of five feet out from the building. And it looks like it almost goes to the end, but it does not quite go all the way to the end. Right, right, so you get a six and a half foot walkway, so you get a five foot awning coming out over it. Um, gas utilities and stuff that are gonna be on the end of the building. Uh, I asked about that, and the main will come to the side of the building as you show one on the third or fourth page there. Uh, fourth or fifth page, but then it splits into separate utilities inside for each one. Correct. There'll be a meter bank, essentially typical. Uh, this is what again what I see a lot in Middleborough is they do. So each each uh, each unit will have their own will pay for their own service. So if, if someone gets shut off, the whole bill is not getting shut off. That's fine. So so the the uh, next question that I had was uh, was lighting. So I noticed you put a a quick lighting diagram. Um, Without me searching through here in this plan, how many poles or, or stuff do you have in there? How many lights? So on the lighting plan, it looks five, like five or seven. So one, yeah. One, two. It's like three. It's like three poles in the rear with the. Uh, Two wall lamps, one side wall lamp, two front wall lamps, and then one, two holes out front. Okay, and looking at the looking at the uh, um, your, your circle, your lighting is staying on your property. Yes, that's what it was designed as at the, at the property line. Zero point right. one. Okay. So, so uh, and the last condition that I had asked for, that, that I had mentioned, two cents, was on the number of units that you had five. And looking at the, looking at the uh, driveway, you moved it. The facade, you fixed it up a little bit. The landscaping, it looks like you've, you've, you've dressed that up uh, front and back. Um, but I, I still, my personal opinion was the fifth unit. And, and what is the, the main reason that we can't get rid of the fifth unit? Just cost? Yeah, cost. I mean, for the, to, to construct a building like this, there's a, there's a lot of fill that's going to be coming in on this, on this building. This groundwater is, is, is fairly high. So, I mean, you need to have the, you know, the, the, the owner needs to um, be able to substantiate the cost of building the size building. And five, five units is, is purely fits, you know, it's a 7,200 foot building, it's 20 by 74, it's 20 feet, each unit is 20 feet wide by 74. It's very typical. Um, it's what each contractor would need. Um, so I, 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 to, to reduce the number of units, uh, it doesn't really make sense, if you will. It, it's, we meet the parking schedule, we meet all the requirements. The building is, is uh, impervious area requirements, <coughs> building coverage requirements, we meet all that. Um, so it, it sort of be sort of arbitrary, if, I guess, if we cut down the number of units. Um, you know, whether it's four, whether it's six, I mean, it's, it's, we go by the size of the building and the parking requirements. Yeah. Is it possible to consider making the two end elevations a little more interesting? The sides? You mean, you saw the, the sides? There, I mean, neighbors, I, I don't know who the neighbors are barked about, but they would be looking at a very boring elevation. The, 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 these buildings are prefabbed, right? Typically, typically they Don't the manufacturers <laughs> have some options for putting some relief into that facade? Well, I mean, you gotta look at where this building's located and, and see what the, the screening is. You're driving down Cranberry Highway and where this building is located, you're, you're, Excuse me. Um, what are we off the road? You're, you're a substantial distance back from the road. You are not gonna see the side of this building when you drive down this road. Mm -hmm. um, you, there's, there's, there's a vacant lot, actually each side of us, there is a vacant lot. Who knows if this is even gonna be able to be even built on. It's all wooded on the right side. So if you're driving down Cranberry Highway, you're not gonna see, for you to be able to see the side of that building um, is, is, is gonna be a challenge. Um, it's not like the propane place where the building is tucked to one side or the other, on, on the, where it's tucked to that left side. So when you're driving down, you have that, they're parking on the right side of that building. So you see that whole, that whole side of that building. This building is, long in front. It's not, it's not meant for people to, to sort of coming around the sides of this building. Um, if you look at your sight lines, in order to, to see the side of that building and you draw a, an angle to our property line, um, you, 
you, you pass the property before you can even see this. You're, you're almost, what are we, about 100 feet back? I mean, looking at it right now, 60 from the road, 80 feet. You now this building's 80 feet back from the road, so it's not up on the road. It's not like it, it, you would see in a typical. My question was, can they do something to improve the facade? Can you do something to improve the facade? The, the, the manufacturer must have some um, <coughs> options, well, no? Or even some, another, a few, it, you will see it. It will be seen, and I just think that it's, it's if we're trying to do something for the fabric of the, of the streetscape, uh, that we ought to be able to. Uh, okay. uh, we do show landscaping on that, on the side that isn't facing the woods, um, that has that traveled lane. Um, so that would mask it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Right, and I, I think what Brian's, what Mr. Wallace basically was saying is if you look at the left side, it's all, it's shrubbery along that side. You basically have trees along that side, but we can upgrade it. I mean, tell us, I, I guess we can upgrade. What, what, what would you like to see, I guess? Because site plan approval is not you, got, is not you telling us that you don't like the look of a building. Site plan approval is conditioning a, 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 a a project appropriately that meets by right. It's, this is basically like a building permit process. So, so I, I don't know what you would like to see. I'd be more than happy to accommodate what you'd like to see. I don't think you're gonna see this building as you drive to the side of this building as you're driving down the road. Um, so. I, 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 I just think that the, that the proponent has an obligation to, even though there may be bushes in front of it, that, that I, as a citizen, will see that at some point, and I think it could be better. That's all I'm saying. I, I don't think I have the authority, I, <laughs> any authority to force anything upon you or upon the proponent. But well, what, what I'm just saying is, if you look at that plan, we have an existing shrubbery line, existing tree line. On the, if, if, turn to page sheet three, okay, okay please. And are you on sheet three? Yeah. So if you're looking at sheet three, you see the grass, and there's a, there's a hole out front, out front of this property. You have a whole landscape area at, at the entrance, okay? And then these trees are to remain on the right side, all these trees are to remain, and then you see all the trees and the shrubbery up against the building as well. So you're not gonna see much of that side, never mind driving 35, 45 miles an hour down Cranberry Highway in a, a, a building that's 80 feet back. We can, we'll look into it. I, my client said he'd be more than happy to try to, to Just but what would you I like to see? I, I mean, that, that's, it, that's purely subjective. That's what the architect came up with. You'd like something, maybe another board member would like to see something else. Well, the, the suggestion, my, my reaction is that it's a boring facade to look at for, right. for the public. Okay. It's a good facade for an industrial park. Mm -hmm. My opinion that Cranberry Highway shouldn't look like that. Do you have any signage proposed for the front of the building? I didn't see it here. I think just over the right. So are you referring to a site sign or individual? Individual business. Or uh, I believe it's shown on above the doors on the architectural plans. Right. It's unit A, unit B. <laughs> Lettering on the awning, anything for individual tenants? It's not proposed. It's just a sign over the building, probably identifying which unit and what, which contractor is in that unit based on the architectural plan, and I see. It just shows unit A, unit B, unit C. Yes, if I may re recommend maybe what Mr. I don't know your name, sir. Emmanuel. Das Emmanuel. If we put uh, in front of the windows, these windows were uh, six feet wide, let's say, five feet, mm -hmm. make a flower bed in front of every window. But what it has to do is gonna discontinue the sidewalk. If that's sun, or we could make it, the sidewalk six feet, we could make a flower bed two feet by five or six feet, whatever the window is. So you'll have one, two, three, five flower beds. 
-hmm. And uh, if you're concerned with this, they're concerned with the side and not the front. To be honest with you, on the side piece towards the wetland, to the right, what is the north side or east side? Mm -hmm. This is the, what John's saying, you really don't see it. Now looking to the left side where the driveway, if you want to add awnings, you could, could easily add some awnings, make it more attractive, and e add a couple of windows to the facade to the, when you're driving down, what's the other side? But the driveway is side. That's the driveway side. Mm -hmm. So we could we could wrap the awnings all the way around and add three, four windows on the side. That makes you happier. It will make it more, a little more attractive. And the awning in the front, if you want it as wide as the sidewalk, it, it, it doesn't matter. We could make it six and a half feet as wide as the sidewalk. Right. I mean, five or six feet to make it, like John was saying, make the proportion nice instead of looking small awning on a big building. I mean, the sound to think about, or, I mean, uh, Dr. Zaknoon is willing to work with you, whatever you like to see. Uh, whatever you have suggestion, this suggestion, I see, uh, if you have other suggestions, you're welcome to bring them on. Yeah. I, I just make the condition of the approval. Whatever you guys come up with, tell us how you want this building. Thank you. Tell us what you want this building to look like. And if we don't like it, then we'll go from there. However, if you want to design the building for us, please do. Just, you know, condition it appropriately. That's fine. I, I'm, not a, I'm not a mind reader. I, I tried to get an informed meeting with, with the board rather than come through a public hearing process to, to no, talk no, well, about it. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, uh, to irritate no, 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 you. It's just, just that this is six my months in for us, so we're, we're, we're a little, we're yeah. a little <laughs> you know, it's, it's just cool. a site plan approval. It's just you know, a most just towns, you just go and get a building okay. permit. And, and here we are six months in. So I feel bad for Mr. Zach now at this point. I would say that, um, to me, the only thing that I see that makes it look industrial now is, is, is the doors. They look like maybe something more like a traditional storefront would, would look better than... Solid glass door. Yeah, we could add more glass. Again, it, we'll accept the condition. I mean, you know, you guys, yeah. <laughs> saw glass doors, wanting to wrap around the building. Yeah. To me, that's the only thing that strikes me that looks industrial like it uh, You know, I, I'm sorry again if I'm still allowed to speak. You're absolutely right. I didn't, uh, right. I didn't notice these doors. There would definitely be full glass door like storefront. That's definitely not going to be like that. I don't know why the architect put those, but there would be like a full glass door like any component farm you see or any. Uh, like a store you see, all yeah. glass regular doors. And uh, yeah, well, that would definitely be like that. And if you like to see the, w the window wider in the front, we could do wider. I mean, they, if you like, um, like I said, if they're six feet now, you'd like to see them eight feet, we could do eight feet. Well, that's kind of what, to me, that depends on what he's hoping to attract as a tenant. Is he, is he looking to attract a retail trade and, and have a display or is it no no you know that would it's be strictly as you all know we, we as you all know we all here most of us blue we blue collar workers we all either construction mm -hmm. painters plumbers or whatever we are so and we we believe that that's that would go because I have few people myself who ask me about it for Dr Zach Noon to lease from him which is an electrician plumber foundation guys. So that's mostly what you're going to have. It's not going to be retail for sure. But where are they going to keep all the inventory, Nazi? In the back. In, in the back. In the warehouse area. In the that's warehouse. In that warehouse area. What they typically do is they build shelves. But it's not a retailer. It's not a dollar it's, store. It's, 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 it's a, a contractor, yeah. yeah the I, mean, thing uh, is, I think the question I asked before, the concern is, I still can't see how you're going to have five contractors working out of one dumpster. Okay, we could put three dumpsters. Parking. I where's mean, he, where's the employees going to park? Most, let's say you're an electrician contractor or a, you get your stuff and you get out of there. You're not sitting there. I got three guys working for me. I got two vans. They what? I got three guys working for me. I got two vans. You're parking in the warehouse. That's why the overhead doors in the back. Right, but you're, you're parking in there. So for security reasons, you're parking in there. If you're an electrician, you're storing your wire and everything indoors for security. It's, so basically the two vans are in the warehouse. The, the office up front is where you typically maybe have 
the, the girl that's gonna be answering the phone, billing, typically, maybe the owner's in, the, in that office. That, that's about all you're gonna see in those, typically. And then out back in the warehouse is where you'd have your two, your three vans, whatever can pull in there. That's 70, what is it, 74 feet, 74 feet long. So the front, that front office is only 20 by 20. I give you a perfect example, if I, if I may. Uh, uh, all right, I, I need to sit. Sit down now. This is just a perfect example of the welding shop next door. I mean, how much traffic he has, how many employees. There's one person. I go there all the time buy stuff. There's one person who runs the shop. And he's got his stuff stored. That's and he's got 10 rental trucks parked on the grass in the bushes and everything else. Well, there's no rental trucks there. But the, you're using the welding shop as an example. I'm using that's on, that's well, only one, uh, one Does business. he have a permit to rent trucks? No. Well, that, 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 that becomes an issue. He should probably go get a permit to rent trucks. Mm -hmm. And if he goes to get the permit, come see you or see the zoning board or building inspector, he should tell him where's the parking gonna put. I totally agree with you. I've seen them down the road at a gas station. They get like 30 of them and nobody says sign. I mean, they should, these things, I'm totally against it. It's a business by itself. It should be, have dedicated parking, the dedicated lining, they have them on the grass, on the mud, on stones. They rent them left and right. I don't see these people have licenses. So that that's becomes like a rent. It's a, like a rental car. It should have a, the, the proper permitting. So, but you cannot penalize Dr. Zaknoon if somebody gonna go do it because it'll be illegal. So I, I guarantee you right now, if the building inspector tomorrow pull, go put a cease and desist on. Uh, the welding guy for renting trucks or the gas station down the street, he will be stopped. S simple answer. And like to go back to, to your answer, I get, I, 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 do, I deal with a lot of subcontractors, as you all know. My, for instance, my HVAC guy, he goes in the morning, loads his truck, he's got, he buys like 30, 40 condensers at once, he got a deal with them or furnaces, he stores them, he goes load up, him and his guys and his son, and he leaves, that's it. And nobody's in the office all day. This isn't gonna be a restaurant or a, or an ice cream shop or a, and at the most it will be a retailer would be something like the welding shop. But it's, it definitely is not gonna be a welding shop because the welding shop down the street. But even with that, there's, there's, not, there's not much impact. And as Charlie had mentioned, if the use change, apparently if that turns into the restaurant, then we'll have to go to upgrade the septic, the traffic, the, the, the parking, all this will have to change. But right now, it's what you, what you call a trade men's condo. If I may, Mr. Chairman, um, for the record, my name is Brian Wall. I'm an attorney and I'm representing the applicant. I think the last point is important uh, to, to look at. The, what's before you is site plan approval, and so the proposed use is allowed as a matter of right. There's no relief needed under zoning. And the engineer has testified that the site plan um, meets all zoning requirements as to area, front, rear, yard, side setbacks, height, et cetera. So it's, it's a, a matter that could be approved by a building permit. So what the planning board's role here is to condition the project so that it has a safe site plan insofar as the public is concerned, like deliveries, parking, ingress, egress, the dumpsters are an appropriate matter. And the applicant's very happy to work with the board as far as conditions are concerned, but I would respectfully say this in a, in a very respectful way that <clears throat> I think that the site plan approval process is to impose conditions. And Mr. Nazi made a good point too, that if any use comes into a, a, one of the units that requires further zoning relief, then they'll have to come before either you or the Zoning Board of Appeals for that. Um, I actually had a case uh, down on the Cape relatively recently where there was a property like this and the person wanted to have a small used car business and that required zoning relief. It required amendments to the site plan. So if there's anything that's gonna trigger further review, it will, come, it will have to come back before you. If I may, Mr. Chair, again, regarding the dumpster Mike uh, has uh, mentioned, 
I give you another example. At down at my Jordan Plaza, I had one dumpster for the whole building. Then Sears came along. Sears, they use a lot of cardboard. So, okay, we added a dumpster for them. Now, uh, I didn't look what size dumpster pad they built. What is the dumpster? Yeah. 20 by 20 pounds. 20 by 20, that's plenty. Oh no, 12 by 12. All right, so we have a 12 by 12 dumpster enclosure. We could do 12 by 20. I mean, a regular five yard dumpster, what's that, five by five? As it is, we could fit two. Do you want to make 12? I'll, I'll make 12 deep by 20, so we could put five dumpsters. I mean, we're willing to work. I mean, Dr. Zach Nguyen, willing to work with you wherever you like. I mean, I, and I feel. Uh, I feel we should be supportive of Dr. Zakno. And I personally brought him to the town of Wareham about eight years ago, bought him a house in West Wareham, moved his practice to Wareham. His wife, she's a doctor also, internal medicine, she moved her practice to Wareham. They bought the clinic, the whole building, and Dr. Gomes' practice behind Toby. Originally, they were gonna, I was going to build him his practice there. Then he, the building came up for sale, so he preferred to stay because his wife has her patients at Toby. She walks across the street. So, and, uh, and he, he's nothing but a good local citizen taxpayer. So I think we, we kind of owe it to him to help him out a little bit. Well, everybody gets things. So it's only fair to help uh, Dr. Zaknoon. We're not even like giving him anything free. It's it's all by the book. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or changes? Um, yeah, in my letter of uh, February 13th, um, I had suggested some uh, recommendations for conditions of approval. Um, I do have a couple of questions, though, based on the testimony that we've heard tonight, uh, if I could ask. Um, John, when you did the, the turning movements uh, to satisfy the department, the fire department, were you using the template for their aerial ladder? Uh, for that, um, I went to the fire department in advance and talked to them about the movement plan, and we used dimensions that they had used for a project previously. Um, I think it was um, make piece. Uh, they so so you, used, you used the the documentation, the, the uh, dimensioning and so forth for the wheelbase and so forth mm -hmm. for that aerial ladder. Okay. Correct, yep. Do you know? It's shown on the plan, 41, 41 and a half feet. Yeah, those, the ladder yeah, that, those are the dimensions of the, of the ladder. It's a straight chassis tandem axle vehicle. My question has to do with whether or not the turning template that you use for that would be consistent for a WB50, which is a semi-trailer. I think one of the discussions that we had at a previous hearing was whether or not, and the reason that the location of the driveway got changed was because a semi-trailer template did not fit. Um, so I'm wondering whether or not showing this template is sufficient or whether or not maybe you should check the WB50 template to see if it's the same. I think it will work in the front, but I don't know about the back. Mm -hmm. I, did, I know they're run, different. You did run a few different scenarios. Uh, I do believe, yeah. And um, oh, have you got a plan that shows that? Uh, so the I do board not, can see unfortunately, it? have a plan that shows that. Okay. Um, the only other thing I had, and I might have uh, mentioned this real early on, um, your plan does not scale, John. I don't know why. Hmm. Um, as a matter of fact, when I, it's a 20 scale plan, so it, it's big enough that it should be fairly accurate. Mm -hmm. But I'm looking at the, Southeast sideline, 
Uh, one dimension is 113, 46. The best I can get is 110. Um, westerly side line is 300.81 feet. And I'm getting 294. So th there's something a little bit fluky with the, with the, the scaling of the plan. My concern is that if the plan is not to scale and a contractor attempts to use this plan to scale dimensions off, he's not going to be right. I want to be sure that that gets corrected. Yeah, we'll, we can definitely make that a condition. I bet you it's just the model space viewport probably had yeah. a glitch in it. Uh, whatever it is, it, it should be corrected so that it's going to make the whole thing a little bit bigger, but at least it'll scale properly, so there's no question about that. We'll submit. We'll make that a condition of approval. We'll definitely submit a, a two-scale plan. Um, and then I'm, I'm not sure whether the board has made any uh, decision or, or define what it is that they might like to see for facade changes and so forth, um, whether or not it becomes a landscaping feature or whether it becomes something unique to the building side. Um, just jotting notes as you talk, so I don't know where that was left. Other than that, John, to answer your question, um, everything that's in my letter here um, on these plans are the same as what I had put into this letter. <coughs> that's the February 13th letter, by the way. Let's go. Yeah. Huh? I checked it too. I wasn't sure what was wrong. Yeah. Charlie, what, excuse me, what, what, what sheet's not scaling properly? I'm I just, looking checked, at your I just site checked two plan. of them. I'm looking at the site plan. Sheet number three? Number four. <coughs> you just put a scale on that, on the dimension on the back of the lot. Um, you got 150 plus 2182. Just put a scale on the 150 foot dimension and it's like 145. I got 172. It may be an issue of the copies. Um, I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't think so either. No. Charlie, would, are you looking at 2 6 of 17? Excuse me. Uh, yeah. How's yeah, your scale? <laughs> so I don't think my scale is this. <laughs> this dimension from here to here says 150. This is 145 or 6. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. not right. Hmm. Oh, we got the wrong building. <laughs> That's strange. Yeah, mine scales perfectly fine. I don't know. There's a test. There's a test, Charlie. Yeah. Test. <laughs> so those are copies. Those copy machines. That is, the original scale is fine. So we'll just make sure, obviously, that I don't know why that came out that way. We can, you know, rescan them too, resubmit um, just the copies. <laughs> Now, you make reference to a 35-foot buffer for a Board of Appeals in the back. Mm -hmm. Was that because the previous site plan was for an office that requires 40 feet, 40 foot setback? No, that was part of the variance decision requirement, one of the conditions of the variance that you maintain a 35-foot landscape buffer. So it wasn't right. to address a specific condition? It was not. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't know what the use was going to be of the lot at that time when they granted the, when they changed it from the MR30 to the general commercial. They granted a variance for that. And one of the conditions was to maintain a 35-foot buffer on the back, on that plan. I've been fairly quiet tonight because I have not been a supporter of this project. Um, I'm still not. So I just wanted to clarify the reasons because I've heard the attorney speak and I don't disagree, but I have serious safety concerns where you don't know the uses yet, you don't know the vehicles in the back. The type of tenancy typically will have trailer deliveries. When doctor originally applied he applied for a 5400 square foot building his medical building i thought that was adequate size and good size for the property 
It allowed safety, parking, getting on and off the highway, you know, the main road. Um, I think 7,400 square feet is too big, my opinion. And I know you've said you've met all of the zoning and, the, and I understand that, but my concern is, is really the safety of the people on that road. You got a tractor trailer trying to get in there, doesn't know the property, gets halfway in, halfway out, the roadway's partially blocked. I just don't think it's a safe environment. And for that reason, I'm, I'm not in support of the project. I think you've done a nicer job with the building. I think you've answered many of our questions, and I think you've you know, done a good job there. But I have safety concerns, and of course, from the start, you have residential properties across the street. You know, the use has to be somewhat acceptable based on hours, types of you know, noise that will come from the property. You know, like you said, it's going to be a contractor's facility. Does that mean that there's going to be trucks coming and going at 6 a.m.? Is that, uh, or is it at night when they're having deliveries? Um, there's residential behind the property. And for those reasons, I have concerns with the type of use you're talking about. Uh, I just wanted to be clear, because I do, I do not dislike the project as much as I dislike some of the specifics of the project. And, um, I agree. I think that your applicant and your client is probably a great citizen for the town and would do a nice job and wouldn't let it get out of control like some of the other properties on the main road. But based on the size, and you, you've already stated you can't shrink the building, so I feel like I'm at a bit of an impasse, and I just wanted to be clear and fair. We do realize we get a mass DOT curb cut, which is they look at safety, so we do have a mass DOT. Um, you also realize that the, the deliveries for any of these units would be, any of the units are, when the, when those units are open, 7 to 4.30, it'd be, uh, if you're going to get a delivery, say it's a roof, say it's a roofer, he's going to get the deliveries from the lumber yard or from, right. you know, during normal business hours. You assume, but we don't know who the tenants really are yet. That's we? up to you to condition the, the, the but property. But I'm just saying, you know. Yeah, we don't I mean, need, we yeah. want, we don't want your, your applicant, your, your client to build a building and then find that he can't get the tenants that he had hoped, and now he's scrambling for alternative tenants that might not meet the same criteria as what you're proposing. Um, that would be even worse because that puts him in a bad financial position. So it certainly would be much nicer if he had some tenants, but we don't know that. So we're going based on what you're telling us. And that, you know, I just really think the building's too big for the property. I don't think trucks will be able to come and go. I mean, you've certainly shown turning radiuses, but you're, there's nothing in the parking lot. That's not going to be. It's an impossibility. So um, I just wanted to, you know, explain to you some of my concerns and let you think about them, and you can go any way you want. May, may I respond to one of the things you said? Yeah. So it seemed to me that your comments were in, in two different categories. One had to do with safety, traffic safety, yes. which is definitely germane to site plan approval process. Yes. The other one seemed to talk about the neighbors, and if I interpreted or understood your comments, you have concerns about the impact that this site might have on the nearby neighborhood. Well, yes, appearance and, and impact of the businesses, absolutely. Because right. they are more um, in line with what an industrial park would offer as opposed to retail operations um, with trucks and things of that nature, so. I understood. M my simple comment would be that when the zoning board granted the variance, they, they definitely changed the character of this particular area. Um, my understanding was it was residential before, yes. and then the board gave this variance that allows general commercial uses and um, they did try to condition that. That's where that 35-foot landscape buffer comes from. Yes. And it also says no neon flashing signs, Yes. whatever that's worth. But in any <laughs> event, I'm not trying to argue with you. I just no, wanted to point I, out that the, this variance runs with the land, right. and th the project is, is as of right. So it's something that's allowed under the zoning. But I think it's unsafe Okay. based on its configuration. And that's not my category, so I'll let John address that. I can't tell you it's mine either. I'm yeah. just telling you that I think it's an unsafe project. And, and I haven't seen anything change to make me change my mind. So. Okay. 
And to me, that's a concern. I understand. If you pushed your landscaping into that 35 foot buffer. If they shrunk the building, they would have adequate space for trucks to enter and exit safely. I just want to be clear, 7,400 feet doesn't work. So my thoughts were if you push that landscaping back and put some gravel there to give a little more room for vehicle movement if necessary. <clears throat> I see you've maxed out on your coverage. Building coverage 15. You go up to 40 with 15. But your lot coverage is 60. 60 and 60. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you have 94 feet behind that building. And that's Cape Cod Berm. So it's not, you're not restricted, you're not confined, if you will. But that's why you have the overhead bins, the overhead bays. You know, if you get in a delivery, I don't see, George, how many times have you got a tractor trailer truck delivered? Seriously, I mean, you're an HVAC guy. That's who we're looking to rent this out to. <coughs> How many, how many plumbers do you know get trapped? I mean, you get, they're, they're going to go, they go and buy supplies, they bring them back from the job site in the trucks, and they need a place to store them. You need to store them inside for safety, you know, safety and security, so people aren't stealing your stuff. You know, you, you get wire from an electrician, gets wire from the job sites. Now he has a place to go put his wiring, his, you know, his category, you know, all, categorize all the stuff inside on shelving, um, and also park his van inside so people aren't breaking into it and he's not running it out of his house anymore. He's running it out of this location here. It's a great use. It's, it's not toxics for the area. It's basically, it's, it's a great use for the area. Um, you get in commercial, it's, it's, I, I don't see tractor, tra tractor trailer trucks really coming in and out of here. It doesn't have uh, to be a tractor trailer truck. A large box truck is going to have problems getting in and out of there. Once that backyard is contractors equipment, Contractors, trailers, contractors, employees' vehicles, contractors, trucks broken down. Trucks aren't getting in and out, in and out safely. And you can say all you want. I, I'm also a general contractor. I'm around that world. Mm -hmm. So. If the building was smaller and there was more room for trucks to maneuver, get in and out. It can be conditioned. It can be conditioned. That's all I'm saying. You, if you have what employees' trucks, I mean, we can go back and forth. But I, I, I you, you, you're, you're speculating on the fact that you're going to have people parking when you can just make a simple condition that, um, you know, no more than you know they're going to be parking parking in the front. What do you need 15, 16 spaces for in the front? That's where the employees are going to park in the front. Why are they going to park? And this is on the in the you have employees coming to work to jump in the van. One or two guys are going to park in front. Um, that's as your general contractor. You go go to go to Middleborough. This this is not you. What we have here is not unique. This is a normal prototype for what works in Middleborough. So if you feel it's unsafe, um, Middleborough Plain Board's not doing a good job, I guess, because I drive to my buddy's shop all the time with a very similar situation, and I got my measurements and I got all that. What we have here from that, and there's no problem at all. Maybe the only problem I could see is sometimes they store stuff outside. And the landlord, the landlord tells them you can't do that and they have to remove it. So a condition of approval that you can't have outside storage. Everything can be conditioned to address the concerns. You know, and, and I don't see the ability of a box truck not being able to turn around in a hundred by hundred and forty foot area. I I I think I don't know. I, that's all. But that's fine. We can go back and forth. Right. Speaking of back and forth, if I'm out of line, Mr. Chairman, ask me. Um, I don't think we're going to persuade you that this project is gonna, is worthy of your approval. No, we Could don't. we have some feedback from the other board members to kind of find out where we are? Well, 
I'm good with it. I got everything I had asked for except the one thing, the fifth unit, and, and, and a dollar is a dollar. There's a couple of conditions I'd like to, to, uh, to add to my two cents is I like the idea of when someone said the glass door is in the front, perhaps you can make it a double window with the, with the door, make it a storefront looking thing. It might dress it up a little bit. And then Emmanuel's comment on the on the one side, if, if you add a couple of windows on, on that side, uh, I think with the trees that are there, maybe put some of the tall trees in between them, you could dress up that side. Other than that, I don't uh, I don't have a problem. It, 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 the problem I have is every applicant comes in wants to put 10 pounds in a five pound bag. There's, there's, you're not the only engineer and attorney that sits here with that. So. Pretty much have to tell every applicant, no, you can't do this on your land. So, uh, I think the conditions we could put on it will dress it up a little bit more than they already did. Okay, thank you, John. Yeah, along those lines, uh, I just think you're you're selling yourself a little short by limiting it to that arrangement. I know it's it seems to be popular. It would seem like we'd have market saturation by now, but. You're on a busy road that could attract some retail or some other uses that may or may not be more uh, profitable. I don't know. I don't know what the uh, square foot per category is, but and I think you're kind of limited in that respect. But uh, for what it is, I, uh, I'd support it with some minor tweaks. Like like the doors, it's just. Thank you. You probably get more dumpsters. <laughs> get more dumpsters, condition me. We'll give you five. Good you in it. Okay. Well, I would think the dumpster would, depending on your use, if a, one client needs his own, then you're gonna expand the your comments the facade or I, I, I I'm new to the board okay. I've spent um, the last 50 months. years on Same your point. side of the table <laughs> and I appreciate the forces that are in play I just feel that no. an application owes to the town as well as to the applicant and I don't think this does it visually for the town Oh. But if the if it meets all the other requirements, uh, sure. Okay. I just don't think it's right for. Yes, owe more to the town than uh, Butler building. In, yeah. In a major area. And and I sh I share your concerns as as a person. The the problem is is that um, and I say this with all due respect. There's no architectural standards. I mean, some towns do have architectural review or architectural standards to apply. And so the applicant is just, he's following the rules in, in submitting an application. But, but we, we'll, we take your comments to heart and we will, we will do what we can. <clears throat> to correct you, there are architectural standards in the zoning bylaws under section 760. Okay. Yeah. And it applies to commercial districts. Okay, I stand correct. So we meet them. We meet them, okay. Are, are we gonna ask for continuance? Or no, no, I think we go forward. Condition. <laughs> okay. Right. I, I stand corrected, but Mr. Churchill tells me that we do comply with those. Um, so does the board feel comfortable going forward with conditions with regard to the comments that were just made? Mm -hmm. I think we could have a decision that includes those as conditions. I have just a couple of comments, if I could, George. Uh, my letter of the 13th reiterated uh, a previous comment because this property was subject to natural heritage. Do you have anything in your file, Ken, that suggests that you have a letter from natural heritage saying that they're all set? seek a determination from I have a letter from Fisheries and Wildlife. Yeah, that should be it then. That's probably dated November 11th, 2016. 
that's fisheries and wildlife. Is that natural heritage? It's not natural heritage. But they also re received the Massachusetts Endangered Species Act review checklist and supporting documentation for review pursuant to the Mass Endangered Species Act regulations. You have anything, John, in your file yeah, for yeah, natural I heritage? A, I have a folder on natural heritage. Okay. Right um, maybe while he's looking for that, um, my first comment in the letter was that uh, uh, a curb cut permit is still required by Mass DOT. So any condition that you might impose on this should be subject to that, July. that they need to receive yeah, approval from DOT, DOT for the curb cut location and the dimensions that they've shown. Uh, I think they're probably compliant based on the width of the uh, entrance and the curb radii that are there, but it's still subject to the receipt of that permit. The letter, it was to the Conservation Commission of Wareham. Uh, and it said that it will not adversely affect the actual resource area habitat of state protected rare wildlife species. Okay, well that's... It only that's, pertains to the matter of rare wildlife habitat. Does that's that that's because wildlife? they were uh, probably in some respects within 100 feet of the wetlands on the adjacent property. But that's different than natural heritage. And they also identified the Massachusetts Endangered Species Act kind of, and said it will not result in a prohibited take of a rare listed rare, of a state listed rare species. Okay, that's that's the language I was looking for if that's in that letter and it sounds like you're covered. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Yep, that's that's the natural heritage letter please. <clears throat> and and We've done it a couple times. <laughs> you have to do it. And when you file with conservation, you have to you have to go to natural heritage if you're within natural heritage. So we wouldn't have got our conservation approval if we didn't get that letter. Were, were there test pits done here, John? Determine the groundwater? Yeah. Yes. Look on sheet four, George, of the plants. My only concern there was um, the time when they were done. They were done in July and August, uh, one of them 13 years ago, another one six years ago. So one of the conditions I would request that you put in there if you so choose would be that before any other work gets done that the groundwater be evaluated to make sure it's where they say it is. Uh, from my own personal experience across the street, groundwater is extremely high. You would think that uh, being a little bit above that little brook that's uh, close by, next to where uh, Mark's Auto is, that you'd have enough elevation, but you don't. It's just kind of a unique area. So uh, they have it shown. They have uh, modeling shown, which is a pretty good indicator, but you never know. And based on the time of the year when it was done, August and July, which is a dry period of the year, I just want to be sure that we were looking at high groundwater making sure that the drainage system has that two-foot separation that's supposed to. Anything further from the board? Anyone wish to address from public? As he's not an officer. <laughs> <laughs> Board's pleasure. Was that a motion to close? Yeah, I make a motion to close the <laughs> public Thank you. Second. There's a second. Okay. Discussion. Thing. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> hearing is closed. Any recommendations? I recommend we approve with condition. Is there a second? Second. George, does Emmanuel get <coughs> to vote on this, seeing he's the fifth member? Uh, he was not present for all the I don't know how many public hearings did he... No, this is my first visit. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, 
Would you like to review some of the conditions that uh, Charlie has put forth? I don't know if you all have copies on his February 13th letter. He made some recommendations for conditions. That's not necessarily complete based on the discussion you had tonight. So, Charlie, one of your conditions that you had mentioned was the uh, test pits that they should be done probably in a wet season, kind of like now, right? Yes. All right, so I would, I would make that a condition that that, that be taken care of uh, so that uh, Charlie can get to review that one more time, make sure we have that two-foot separation. Um, the curb cut, make sure that that state uh, permit goes through. That, that all the radius and what have you gets gets taken care of. Um, I think the the front of the building, uh, the condition that I wanted to see is, is is a glass door. Maybe join them with the windows, but if it doesn't join, I I, I can live with that as well. Uh, the awning. I just wanted to make sure that that looking at the face of the building, uh, you know, you say it sticks out five feet. Just want it proportional. So maybe just take some dimensions again, make it proportional to the face, that it's not some dinky little awning that's stuck on the face of a big, big metal building. Um, I think you should carry it around the elevation that faces. Uh, what am I? What am I looking at? The the far side is that the the west side. Um, I'm, well, I'm, look, I'm just looking at your, your plan there, where the road is. So you got the face of the building. Yeah. Yep. Now, now the elevation to where your finger is, follow that straight to right down there, that elevation there, that's the west side? Northwest. Northwest. Um, that, we, that we add a few windows uh, down that side, and uh, it, it probably wouldn't hurt to run the awning right around that side. Just in case someone looks down there, it's, it's, it's dressed on that side. And the few windows that you add on that side, you can make some of the five foot or six foot plantings in between them, John, work out that, it, that it, it's going to dress up the face of that building as they, as they grow. Well, wrap, um, wrapping the side, wrapping the awning around isn't going to do much for your plantings underneath them. No, but it, it's, it, it, it t trying to take a facade that size and, and do something with it, a few windows, Probably isn't going to uh, uh, isn't probably going to uh, uh, take the nakedness away from the building. So I'm just thinking the awning is still up quite a bit. Um, what's that awning? Looks like it's at 10 or 12 feet versus a five or six foot tree uh, shrub. Um, that's just my opinion. If you if you don't agree with that condition, we can take that one out. But. I wanted to see you dress the side of the building as Emmanuel had said a little bit better. Add some windows, maybe the awning, or take a look at the shrubbery a little bit. But you guys know what, what we're trying to accomplish is that it's not just a big blah right. metal mm -hmm. face. Um, so I got two of your conditions, Charlie, two of my own. Hey, Bob. Um, I would say that the dumpster pad in the back of the building should probably be widened because I, I agree with uh, Mr. Baptiste that you're not going to have enough you're not going to have enough for five five contractors or three or what have you using a, a, a 10 by 10 pad or whatever that is so the depth of it is probably fine just widen it out so you get a little more room back there and I would say in the back of the building that you you would want to limit um, outside storage now if you were to get a concrete form guy, you know what's going to happen. He's going to pull up with a couple of flatbeds, and you're going to have forms up the kazoo, which is going to take any turning radius of a fire truck out of the picture. Never mind a delivery truck that, that Mr. Fitzgerald is concerned with. You, you, you can't have that much storage out back. So I would say you limit the, the outside storage um, to very little or none in, in, in the back of that building. And um, the last thing that I always like to see is to just make sure the lighting stays on your property. 
uh, which, which your lighting plan looked to me like it does, but I just want to make sure. Uh, it's quite a few buildings. You, dif you see the different wall packs and stuff they put on, and you drive by, and they, they blind you. The nasty I, I, white ones. I don't, I'm sorry? The nasty white ones. Yeah, so we want to make sure that they're shrouded or light sure. your property, not, not the highway. So any, any other conditions, Mr. Chairman, if you could pick them up from there, I'd appreciate it. Mr. Chairman, could I just um, go back to a couple of things that John mentioned? Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the outside storage, John, um, what's your thought concerning outside storage uh, being restricted in terms of the time that it stays there? In other words, uh, you might have a temporary drop-off that, say, within 12 hours or four, 24 hours that it must be inside. I'm just saying that um, without some specifics, it's either no storage outside or you've got to define a storage area or something like that to where they won't exceed that. Mm. I, I just don't know how you define it by saying it just a little to none, that's all. Yeah, I was trying to get out of that, but um, <laughs> the, yeah. the problem I have is, 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 is being a contractor and I get materials and, and we get stuff that shows up at two o'clock in the afternoon and sometimes it's not gonna make it into the building until the next day. My problem is, is what happens is, next thing you have a Connex box out there or you have a flatbed that we leave all the forms on and we just pull up and we leave two or three flatbeds. Whether they're 20 foot flatbeds or 24 foot flatbeds, I'm just against it. Uh, I know what you're trying to accomplish there. You're trying to have a nice little one or two man band operation, keep it inside, that's fine. But what happens is when you get a, a plumber that has three or four vans, um, it starts to become a, a, a pretty active parking lot. So I, I guess Charlie, to answer your question is I, I, I would limit the park, I, I would limit the, 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 the outside storage now. You know, you know unload your stuff into your 70-foot into your space and be done with it. So I, I just think that 90-foot space in the back will disappear real quick with, with four or five different contractors. I'm just, he might be a great one, he might be a great one, and he's terrible. I'm just that's thinking ahead a little with. bit to what the zoning enforcement officer is going to have to deal with in terms of the, the language of your permit, that's all. Okay, uh, maybe Ken, could you... What about hours of operation? We can, we can condition that also, but Ken, maybe you can, uh, or Charlie wanted to come up with some verbiage for, for that. Do you understand as the applicant, not to, I, I know we shouldn't be discussed, but we can't have outside storage back there. It's, it's gonna defeat the purpose of, of what we're trying to do, so. Um, so um, put on restrictions on the outside storage yeah, in terms of yeah. time and area. What do you think, Charlie? Like the next day? So if there's a delivery the next day, it's got to be brought in. Well, if 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 you're inclined to limit it to a, a certain amount of time, yeah, um, something dropped off today. It's inside within 24 hours. Right. That's one way of doing it. The other way is simply say no storage outside. I can live with that. 24-hour period, it must be inside. Well, the building inspector is going to have to start reading all these conditions, and, and he's going to have to do it every 24 hours. Re to make sure been realistically, the only ones that are going to force this are the other tenants. Well, that's 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 the thing is you, you it know creates it's, a it's problem for the other tenants, and they're going to speak up. Well, that would be exactly it. So you're getting a little electrician with one or two vans that come in to get his pipe and his reels of wire and take off, and he's got to juggle around three concrete flatbeds. He's going to complain real quick. So, well, you know what I mean, is one contractor loads the back parking lot, the other guys are going to start complaining. So, well, But to answer your question, uh, I mean, why we put conditions on any application at all if someone's not going <laughs> to well, check no, it? The 24 hours, how do you, do, how do well, you, you, you go every 24 hours to make sure something's been moved? No, but they, you know, they're all professionals here with, 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 with uh, uh, businesses to run. You, you, you know what I mean? You, you got to trust them somewhere along the line. Unlike the mulch people that put their stuff in swales and everything else, and everyone drives by and watches it, no one says anything. So, someone's going to have to say something. 
the reason for putting something like that in would be if there is a complaint, the zoning enforcement officer has something to point to. He may not be a guardian 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but if he gets a complaint, then he's got something to back up what his decision has to be about the removal of it. Right. That's all. <coughs> okay. Well, that's all I have for, for right now. If you want to add to it. We would add, add standard you, conditions. You, you could, well, all, all, all uh, other boards and commissions standard the conditions have to be adhered to. This is small yeah. batch stuff. Yellow ones, right, John? The yellow ones. Right, no? <laughs> hmm? the yellow ones. <laughs> Sure you can work those a little bit of that would be uh, my concern that they're shaded so they don't shine toward the residential area shield Covered it, the lights in the dumpster. You know, as long as they don't have the bright light white when they come. Delivery hours or anything like that? Any <coughs> concerns? Or? Hours of operation. We always talk about that. So, as you say, Mr. Chairman, that hours of operation and, and uh, major deliveries for these guys should be taken care of. What are the general hours down there? Like 7 to 5 or 7? Yeah, I mean, you're going to have employees probably show up at least 6.30, 6 sometimes, to go, go to the job site. You're not going to get deliveries before 7.30 for many contractors. Or deliveries. Saturday, Sunday. Um, number two, you put Charlie pre application conference. Is that pre building permit application or uh, pre construction? Uh, pre, pre site plan where the contractor goes in and he flags the site and begins to strip trees. And um, if I'm able to get out there with him before he really starts, we can arrange our schedule for inspections and he knows he's got to call me. Uh, sometimes that just doesn't happen and things all of a sudden get out of hand because there's been no inspections before things get covered up. So with that pre-application or pre-construction conference, at least I have the opportunity to tell them you've got X, Y, Z to do for inspections and I want 24-hour notice, that type of thing. Well, that's what I was trying to get at, but the application of what? So pre-construction. Should be pre-construction, yes. We're going to put our boilerplate in here for a uh, template for landscaping. Uh, yeah, with the, the, our regular conditions. Uh, do, do you want to, you can also put on a performance guarantee as well for the, uh, the landscaping. I think that's in our No Charlie standard. Brown Christmas trees. In that's in your standard, by, your standard, standard conditions. Uh, condition two year. That's inspections. No CO will be issued without a sign off or surety in place. And then our standard conditions like no work on uh, Sundays and holidays. Is that for construction? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. 
Did you come up with a uh, workable language for outside storage? Outside storage is restricted for a period of 24 hours. Allow allowance for outside storage for up to 24 hours before placement inside or use. You know, my you know, contract, as John talked about it, HVAC especially, they, they take an old unit off they bring it back to their site because they save it for the scrap. How do you enforce that? I mean, the guy's trying to make a living. He's going to be bringing back units. I don't know how you enforce all that stuff. That was part of my concern about safety. I mean, I, it's somewhat unreasonable because an HVAC guy usually does accumulate his stuff so he can make one run and make his money, right? I mean, he's not going to run to the scrap guy every day. So now you guys, how do you fix that dilemma? You have to store inside. You ever see that stuff? No. Oh. You ever want to? You don't even want to touch that stuff. Never mind. Put it in your building. Right. Girls, no. Say, push it in the landscape back and having some gravel I, in the, the back that's of the yard. That wouldn't be a bad idea. The, that <laughs> was part of my concern, John. I I like the project mostly, but I I think contractor use is going to be difficult for that property. I would have rather seen you put retail in there or something different, you know, but I know contractors. I mean, I own some contractors' condos. It's great until the guy next door moves in and he's got four trailers and three trucks and they sit there all night because he won't let his employees take them home anymore because somebody killed somebody or whatever they, you know. That was my concern. I, I think, <clears throat> as you can see, the board's going to support it, but I think your applicant, your, your client is going to struggle with keeping them under control. That's like, you know, like herding mice. Well, I kind of assume that when they rent their unit, they get the 20 feet all the way to the back of the parking lot as well. Yeah, that's a unit. So they're not infringing on their neighbors. Mm. Yeah. The other thing, is he ever going to condo the building and sell them off? Because then you lose most of that control, right? Yeah, but it's a, whatever we do, we have to follow those conditions. Like whatever conditions you guys put, are the conditions that are going to be on record. So. I just don't like the conditions being too strict that you can't really enforce them, and that's where I think you're going to have some troubles with. and accepted. Public. Public hearings closed. They're moving to put together specifics for the applicant. Um. Last Falls Town Meeting, the uh, town removed the uh, use of Connex boxes that was referred to earlier. Same here now.
they get a delivery in the afternoon sometime, we put it in front of their door, and they've got till the next day to bring the stuff in the door. Is there? And the, the tractor trailers can get in? No. Where are, they gonna, where are you going to get the delivery trucks? Tell them, John. It's too late. <laughs> Public hearing's closed. Is it reasonable to identify temporary storage areas that would be out of the way of turning radiuses? Probably right in front of their garage door. So are you saying this, they can't park their shop vans out back? They have to go in the building? Well, the applicant had said that. If they have like a van or something like that, they want to store it inside so there'd be no vandalism or anything like that. To I them. heard him, but I'm asking you. Well, yeah, Is that I, what you're I, saying? I agree with him. I, I, I think you start parking trucks and you start putting materials back there. The question of, of safety and emergency vehicles being able to get in there and turn around, you, you, you're throwing up your whole project right out the window. I understand, so but... He do what he says he was going to do and put his stuff inside, or he doesn't. It's, it's one or the other. I, I'd like to give them the, you know, all the storage room in the world. They don't have it. They don't have it. And, and in a 74-foot bay, I mean, that's like a trailer truck, really, that, that, that they're going to get. I, I don't think that they're going to be getting these big, huge trailer truck of deliveries up. Even if a guy gets 30 condensers delivered to him, it's, it's one truck boom and his warehouse is full. It's not happening every day. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I've seen electricians get a get a flatbed of pipe. That, right. that place is going to be full in no time if he if he's trying to stock up all his material into that building. But, no, I'm asking I think about it's gang boxes and stuff. They're going to bring. But are you saying at night the tenants can't leave their commercial vehicles in the back parking lot? Well, I that was just saying. I suppose that they. That John said it, but. Okay. I think John's being, representing the applicant. I think they're being overly they're doing restrictive. A good job. Now. <laughs> but I mean, but he said it, but I, that's not realistic. Well, I, I can't speak for him. He, he, he said what he said. I, I'm just kind of following along with it. I don't have a problem if they park their van there overnight, but the, the, the next day, uh, the stuff's, the stuff's got to be out of there. It can't be, can't be filled with, with, with trucks and stuff like that. It's, it goes against what they just presented. Anything further? Anything strike you, Bob? Um, all I can do is just push it back here.
Well, I would, as far as that goes, uh, if you had a carpet guy there or something, that would, one of the small showroom to show carpet samples, I mean, it's not, I don't picture that as being a high volume uh, thing, but it's, it would be something that would fit into a venue like this. You know, you'd have your materials in the back and your small showroom out front. the uh, parking requirements for each use off the top of my head. I don't know if there's a change in that. Retail business, less than a thousand is one space per 200 square feet, gross floor area. Office space is one space per 250 square feet of gross floor area. For retail greater than a thousand square feet, it's one space per 300 square feet. So retail requires less than office space when it's over a thousand square feet. You define it by the parking requirements. This day and age, you could have internet sales there too. You know, I don't know. Would you consider that retail? Going by the plans, you're restricted to 2,000 square feet of office space. That's it. Total. You got, yeah, you got five bays, so there's 400 square feet in each one. So if they came in with somebody wanted to pick one of these bays and do an accounting firm that catered to the trades, they'd have to come in for a change of use, or? Absolutely. That's why I said that there should be a condition in there that, that referred to the sewage flow based on the type of use that's going to be in there because it could change. They designed the septic system on the basis of five bays for this type of use. If you go in with a different use that has a higher intensity for sewage flow, you've got to go back again. Parking. So it's restricted use according to plans. Right. <clears throat> Anything else? If not, 
Look for a motion. Did you make a motion to? Oh yes, you did. And, and I believe there was a second and we were working on the conditions. It's been so long ago I lost track. <laughs> one, one last question if I can. Sure. With respect to the comments that you've made about the landscaping and the extension of the awning on the side. And when it comes time to determine whether or not that Conditions been fulfilled. What are the specifications that I or someone else should look at? To that end, uh, it, the drawing shows the front awning coming out five feet. I believe. I don't think that would be productive if you came down the side. I don't think. I think you're looking for something to break up that wall more well, than. Well, no. Um, I guess I'm asking what is the something because I can't go out there and just say something has yeah, satisfied I, your condition. I mean, my condition that I had said was to add some windows along the side. Uh, Daniel had mentioned, and then I had mentioned bringing the canopy around the side. Well, they already show, they already show stone, right, in the sides? I mean, you've already, your plan shows the continuation of the stone from the front to the sides. Right. That's really decorative. I mean, I... No, I know, but I, Emmanuel's point was well taken. When you looked at the whole facade, the whole side of that building is kind of blah. I mean, to, to put a few windows down that side isn't going to break the bank. It would just, it would break it up a little bit. I don't have a problem if you don't put the awning down the side. I, I, it doesn't matter to me. How about an option of putting a band down the side? Emmanuel, what do you think? Sure. I mean, there are, there are a lot of alternatives. I mean, when, uh, yeah. I, some, something that, that breaks up the, uh, the the height of the facade with the, the uh, horizontal feature. The the scale is way off, and the proportions are way off. So anything they can do to improve the scale, after it's a residential, it's in an area where people who live there will be looking at it, and I just think that it's out of scale and bad badly proportioned. I'm sorry, I don't mean I don't mean it that way. The the proportions can be improved. And, and, and then the scale would improve also. It's not, a, I don't think it's a difficult task. No, that's why I was trying to add your yeah. condition in when I was rattling off my condition. Yeah. Would a change, change of color in the gables section, would that break it up? Well, we'll leave it up to their architect to, to do it. I mean, it, it, everybody is expressing a reaction and I'm sure the architect should be able to, to accommodate it. it, it they're not meant to be negative comments. It's, 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 mm -hmm. My first reaction when I saw it is, you know, it just needs more thought. And that's a scale, proportions. And with all due respect to the applicant's needs, we have needs for the town also. And, and the best we can do for the town, it'll be good for the applicant also. I would say have the architect Take these comments to the architect, and I'm sure he can he can make the improvement. Thank you, George. Would it be appropriate to put as an extra condition that a final architectural drawing be submitted to the board um, prior to the submission of a building permit? Please. I think that's probably the simplest way to do it. Yeah rather than try to condition something that isn't going to work. Right. Uh, you write all that down, Ken? Yep. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, may I ask one more question? Sure. Uh, the material is fixed as metal siding. Mm -hmm. There's no, is there no chance to reconsider materials? Four feet of stone and then metal. If there's nothing else. Then I'll be calling for a vote. 
On the approval with the conditions, our standard conditions along with these specific to the site. Which are the conditions in the letter of, of uh, February 13th from Charlie Rally, uh, which includes a uh, groundwater test and uh, material inspections. Uh, that the dumpster pad, and a large dumpster pad be put in, that the northwest elevation of the building be treated, that the facade be treated, that, and that architectural plans be submitted prior to a building permit being issued, that the lighting stays on the building and is shielded, it stays, it stays on site, that outside storage is restricted, that vans and vehicles must be placed inside bays. That no fabrication, repair, and no retail sales of any kind are allowed. And that the use restrictions are according to the plan submitted. And that the plans are in accordance with the proposed site plan dated February 6th. 2017, prepared by JC Engineering. Um, I didn't think we had settled on no outside vehicle parking. I don't think that's a reasonable expectation. That's what the applicant said. Yeah, I, I only repeated what he had said, George. Uh, Anyway, anything further? Just tell, explain to Mr. Reed that the applicant's attorney asked for opinions from the board members, so the vote at this point is fairly mute. It's but you had time to render those those conditions and then bring them up for a vote. I don't think that you're uh, required to make your final vote on those conditions tonight. You could draft the, uh, Ken, if you drafted the conditions and presented it within two weeks, you could have your vote then and give you time to read them over and make sure they're what you want. I don't think you're restricted. You've got give time between the close of the hearing and when you have to submit your decision to the town clerk. Which is 14 days. All right, so let me, so let me ask this question. If, if we, how many votes do you need for it to pass, for it to, to be approved? We can write all the conditions you want, and if you have how many no votes, What's the, what's the story? If he's not in favor, Mike's not in favor, so that's two no's. This is a site plan review and not a special permit, so I'm assuming that it has a majority okay. All right. rather so, than so, so a right, super majority. So write up the conditions and let's read them. You know. hmm? That's comes under the special permit section. That's what that was. So it's a majority or a supermajority? Yeah. So I think the attorney was quite quite uh, uh, correct when he asked what's, what's the opinion. So um, I, I guess you, you, we ought to get a poll right now before we before we go type up all these things and go from there. Um, My reading of the site plan review statute is that it is the site plan review and not a special permit unless there's another special permit that is applied to the, to the use because it's a uh, permitted as a matter of right or by special permit. So for site plan review. And this is upright. Under 
1565 and 1565 3, it gives you 60 days, I think, from the close of the hearing. Oh. 1565 3E. Permitting authority action gives you 60 days. Well, that's all well and good. I, I don't have a no, I'm saying that if the, if the draft decision was written up, today's the 8th, you've got another meeting in two weeks. You could look at the final draft conditions within the two weeks and approve it next week and still be within the time frame, wouldn't you, Ken? Oh, yeah. I'm always under the impression it was a special permit. It speaks to the special permit granting authority, so maybe the... Uh Paragraph are you looking at, George? The applicability, 1520. Okay, look at 1565-3A. I think it distinguishes between a use by right, which is what the applicant has proposed, and a site plan where it involves a special permit. Yeah, so it says that the cases where the planning board must approve a special permit as for a by right use, the planning board shall hold a public hearing and act as the permitting authority. Yeah. So that was that was my understanding of. bylaw, it has some problems. <laughs> In any event, you'd like to see all the conditions written out and reviewed. Well, I, I'm and you need to review the earlier portion of this hearing. Yeah, I mean, I can look online, I can, I can watch the tape, and I can look at the plans, and I can look at the conditions. And that's me. I still think we got a problem. I still think we have a problem. You, you, you've been here on these hearings before for this case. Uh, Mike has been, been right up front with it from the beginning. His safety concerns, he's not in favor of the project. I don't want to carry this thing on for another couple of months if, if you know in your heart you're not in favor of it, no matter what conditions we put on it. So if it's, if it's, a, if it's a case of just dragging it along, I don't see stringing the applicant along. I think we should know now whether you're in favor of it with conditions or you're not in favor. That's, that's you know, it's not, this isn't a new thing. This isn't something that you're just seeing for the first time. I think you're seeing the canopy for the first time and the brick on the bottom, but you're not, you're not seeing much different than what the young fellow brought in before. That is what he brought in before. Sorry? That is what you saw before. I, I didn't see the canopy. I apologize, unless my eyes are as bad as they say they are. I, I didn't see the camera. I think that's the, f this is the first public hearing. I think this has actually been displayed, the, the landscaping changes in the. Uh, right. So you may have seen it in the office or something. But yeah. I, well, that's why I apologize. I, I remember seeing the canopy. I heard about stone front and a canopy 
but I, I didn't physically see the scale. I mean, John, you're a commercial builder. You got a 12 to two and a half pitch scale. Well, I, it's I a bomb. If I may, procedurally, we believe we're on the site plan approval, which is a majority. So three is what we would need. That's what I'm just asking. I, I, cause I, I we concur with Ken. That's all I was saying. So you guys knew sort of where. That's all I'm asking. Otherwise, we, we, otherwise I would push to, you know, either we do or we don't. So right. we, we can write up the conditions, uh, challenge <coughs> conditions and these conditions, and we can read them nice and neat. That's fine. I have no problem with that. What I have a problem with is if it's not a majority and we definitely have two that are against it, it doesn't make sense to postpone this and carry it on out. One has already said that he's against it for safety reasons. I've heard comments previously from my partner here that he wasn't happy with it. I don't want to see something just get carried on for the sake of carrying it on. That's all my opinion is. It's just one man's opinion. Mm -hmm. Well, if there's a question about the voting, it's easy to ask town council. He can clarify it for sure, you. Sure, sure. Well, I was just asking Mr. Chairman. He, he's been sitting here for years. He probably knows it a little bit better. Uh, I mean, in my mind, site plan review has always been a special permit, but there is... There seems to be a Con contradiction in the uh, in the actual it's verbiage. The statute that authorizes you to do it, and that's what our bylaw says is the basis of it. Mm -hmm. Council can tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> okay. And I want to see the condition of that. I'm not saying you know I, I'm you know I'm not going to support this. Flat out. So we will have a draft of, well, we have a motion on the floor. Would you like to rescind or a vote pending the, uh, amend it pending the review of conditions and the tape? Sure, I'll, I'll amend my motion for, for the approval with conditions until the conditions can be typed up and read by the board and the applicant at our next public hearing. And before that, we'll get an opinion from town council. Yes. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't mind that, Mike, because I, I think it, it's, it, like I say, I'm just concerned if it's four votes or three votes, what they need. It just, it just uh, like you said, it would be a moot point at that point. If, if they need four, we, we're not gonna have four. May I make a point of information and a request with regard to the town council? The reason why I asked for the input from the board members is that it's it's our position that, and I, I think it's the law, I'm, I'm just, I know your town council is gonna tell you, but my understanding of site plan review is it's not by state statute at all. It's a creature of your bylaw. And my understanding is, is that when the use proposed is as of right, the site plan review has to be approved by the planning board by a majority vote. If the proposed use requires relief in the form of a variance or a special permit, and the site plan review is conducted in conjunction with that kind of proposal, then it's a special permit supermajority. So I, my opinion is, is that I, th it, I think it's a majority only. My request is that when you ask town council if it could be made clear that the proposed use is as of right, and so what would the quantum of vote be required on site plan approval for an as of right use? <laughs> it's it's uh, the, the zoning is by variance so in, in other words it's a residential zone but by variance it's general commercial so it's GC the land was issued a, um, the land was issued a variance back in 2011 2009 wasn't that changed though? I thought I thought it was changed. There were two too. properties that were changed to strip commercial. Strip commercial or general that? commercial? Well, it might have been general commercial. There were we two did, properties. We did section out places, but um, there were there were two properties, and I remember the, being at the town meeting when the uh, young lady that owned the property 
uh, said that she was disturbed because it was strip commercial, it was taken out and put into the residential zone, and she applied to the town meeting to change it back. Isn't this one of those two properties? Is it? Is it now? Under general. So it was changed to a commercial zone. I don't believe that. Uh, okay. Uh, that's my personal thinking. I'm just looking at the map 33, 1000, B3, and then BA, I guess it is. Um, I thought these two were, were changed back to the commercial district from the residential. To the, count, to the corner of Meadowlark? No, no. And just those two properties. Just those oh. two pieces. One in I questioned at the time whether it was, whether it was spot zoning or not, but the, the board, I mean the town meeting approved it. This had to have been three or four years ago. Yeah, this is in the history. 2012 town meeting amended this commercial strip zoning district by removing the multi residence 30 district. The following, bounded by the south by Cranberry Highway, to the west by Carver Road, to the north by Route 25, 20 and to the east by Wee Wee Antic River. No, that's the other no, town. That's not it. That's not it. That's the I'm almost that. positive it's those two pieces. That's your that's town. Town. I don't have anything else on that. The history isn't complete. It goes from 2009 to 2012, mm -hmm. so it could have been a... Uh, Town meeting in between. It was right after, it was shortly after that because I can remember her being at town meeting and saying that she had had um, uh, for sale signs out there listing it as commercial property and, they were and she lost the sale because right. it was rezoned residential. Yeah. And I think it was these, this parcel plus the one next to it, I think. There may have been three, Alan. I, I can only recall two. I need those three. Mr. Chair, if you don't mind. They can't when the You don't know whether or not this is a standard site plan? No, I can't hear you. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> Feedback. If you don't know whether this is, at this point here, a standard site plan or one that requires a supermajority, I would think you'd want to get town council opinion first before you vote on anything. Because you're voting on something, that's, you don't know, you don't know what's that's correct. That's where we're at. Well, you're not really, because John's made a motion for approval. He amended, he amended that. But even when he amended it, you're still voting on something where you don't know whether you can do it in the first place. Because you, you haven't made it, you don't, you're not able to make a decision whether it's a, a standard majority of three or a super majority of four. I don't want to make life difficult, but it just doesn't make sense to me. We've never had this come up before that I know in the last seven or eight years. No, there's nothing listed in the book, but it's not up to date. It was recent. Two weeks to the next meeting, you can type things up. Yeah, I know, but they didn't upgrade the yeah. things in the back. There's a list in the back. It hasn't been updated. <laughs> Item number 33 goes to 2012. Is this the parcel, John? I mean, what's 34? Ask the town council the same question in the two weeks we wait. What does it say? Can I come back and vote on it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think we need to answer this question once and for all, anyway. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, 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 it's a question. Uh, I thought to myself, that comes close to spot zoning. We continued but after the two weeks. It was a persuasive argument, and it wasn't challenged by the. So Your initial be, motion was to approve with conditions. To approve with conditions, and I amended it because Mr. Reed wants to read the conditions before voting. So I said, at our next public hearing, we'll have the conditions typed up, and we can read them. At the same time, Mr. Fitzgerald asked the town council to answer my question whether it was mm -hmm. a, a supermajority or a majority. So, so that question can be answered at the same time, or, or previous, or prior to when we get here at the next public hearing, we'll know the answer to that question that I asked and Mike asked, 
Well, and then we'll have the conditions that everyone can read them, and Bob can read the conditions and go from there. Procedurally. That's the reason I don't want to take it off the table is because I think you're going to have two no votes right out of the gate, and, and I, I think that that's unfair to the applicant. But procedurally, I think you need to withdraw it because you're calling for a vote. Yeah, calling for a vote. Yeah, and I and I amended it to postpone the vote for the two weeks so he could read the conditions that were oh. being typed up because he missed them. Mr. Chairman, uh, if I may have a point of order, should I call it? Is it possible? It's kind of getting confusing to everyone. Is it possible for you to ask to reopen the public hearing? No. I mean, it's going way out of hand. Everybody's confused. I ask if it's possible to reopen the public hearing because, quite frankly, the conditions you guys impose on, we thought, some of them we totally disagree with and they're not realistic. And it should have been discussed in the public hearing. We can be closed the public hearing and put conditions by the board member some harsh condition that it's not feasible and it doesn't work you can some condition doesn't work at, at your house you like for instance leaving a car outside the van i would be lying at you if, we, if the guy doesn't leave his van outside of his car this is a uh, you know what i'm saying do you, do you leave this is a, uh, this is a, if i if we tell you yes we will be lying to you i mean that came up after i understand leaving pallets and forms and things like this, but leaving a, van, leaving a van or a car or whatever, it, it's unrealistic. And so other conditions, I think we should, if possible, reopen the public hearing and come back with a plan with, we'll enhance, I'll sit personally with the architect about the awnings on the side, maybe put awning above just the windows and put some high trees in between, do a little enhancement, enhancement to it. Uh, and discuss all the conditions with the applicant. To answer the question, no, there is no provision to reopen the public hearing. As limited as our public input is, it's, it's kind of... Okay, I just tried. Thank you. And we have asked for information, yes. But to debate the conditions at this point, it's it's always nice to, to go through this exercise before you close the hearing. But. And we can have this discussion on the individual conditions when we have them all running and you can digest them. Can the applicant still participate at that point? John? Not, I suppose so. We can have input. We can. Yeah, not really. Um, I think that it's appropriate for the board after the hearing is closed to ask an informational question to clarify something, but we're not actually allowed to testify about matters. Mm -hmm. when, do we, when do we usually ask the applicant if they like the conditions or not? <laughs> and we can't talk about that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think in this particular case, some of these conditions, I, I know it came from the applicant's professionals, but they're really unrealistic. And they kind of play in, sadly, into my concern about safety. So I. I I would like to help support you guys. I really do, because I like to see things built in the town, but I just don't, I just don't know what to do to help you guys, because I can see that we're at an impasse, 7,400 square feet the square footage, and that's not negotiable. So as far as I'm concerned, it, I, I'm ready to vote. I, whatever you guys think it's appropriate. 
Well, the question, you know, let's get a determination and then we'll find out if uh, Bob can participate at that point, if he wants to. <laughs> well, that, that, that's, that's my whole, that's my whole problem is, is, you know, he's, he's, he's been on this hearing for, for a few of it and previously and is aware of the continuances and what have you. And he had a matter that he had to attend to when he got here late. I amended my, my motion to have the conditions typed up so he could review them and, and, and you know, see what we've discussed and see what they had presented by watching the, the film. And if he doesn't want to participate, I think the applicant needs to know right now whether he's got two no's so or again, no. So again, I don't have your uh, full motion in front of me written down. So, so you're saying to delay the vote until the conditions I, are? I, I, made a, I made a motion to, to approve with conditions. And then Bob asked, he said, well, I'm not ready to vote because I can't see the conditions. So I said, I will amend my motion until the next public hearing that, that we approve with conditions, so the conditions can be typed up so he can read them. To the next meeting? To the next, next meeting. meeting. So. Okay. And so that. I, and that I just thought was fair to, to our partner here that, that he gets to see uh, the, the film of the, of the uh, hearing and uh, the testimony that they presented. Um, you'll have to listen quick to the first few minutes. You might be quick. Um, and then, and then he'll have the conditions to read the, the comments that we had made prior to him walking in the door. I think I was halfway through my conditions when he came through the door. So that's why I amended my motion. Uh, and, at, and at the same time, the question came up from, from Mike and myself of whether, it's, whether you need four votes or three votes. And that was the question that was gonna be asked of town council. That can be asked of town council and have that at the same time when we're reading the conditions and then we know what the vote is gonna be. Okay, that clarification of your amendment is. Uh, I just want. To, I, I already submitted twice to town council questions specifically regarding the approval and, and, and the special permit sections and how they relate to such plan. And hmm. I, I never got an answer from him. Well, did you go through the That's chair? Go through the chair. Through the chair. Mm -hmm. Has to go through the chair. Not authorized unless the chair requests. If you want to forward them to me, I. Send it to you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so the motion on the floor, amended motion on the floor, is to delay the vote to the next meeting, where we'll have a determination on the special permit, and we'll have all the conditions in print in front of us. Is that second that amendment? <laughs> okay then, all in favor of? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen. <coughs> For those that don't know, Bay Point has asked for another continuance to June 26th, I think 2017. Oh, Might be 2018, all right, we're gone. Um, site plan review for Charlotte Furnace Road has been withdrawn. Is that a permanent withdrawal? Mr. Chairman, or is it just a regrouping withdrawal? Is it just a what? Permanent withdrawal, or is it a regrouping type of withdrawal? Richard Serkey, who wrote the uh, request for withdrawal, did not know, did, did not explain why. Um, I guess we need a motion to accept their Withdrawal of application, just as a fun. Yes, they want a decision rendered by July. 31. 2018? 
<laughs> Listen, I haven't trouble with that. that. That gives you so. So if we're going to open their hearing on June 26th, they want a decision within 30 days. Is that is that how it reads? Is it 30 days out? I believe. And how's that? How's that appropriate? No, I'm asking. It, to me, I'm it was striking me as inappropriate. Well, they just asked for an extension of about 60 days, yet they're giving you 30 days to hear it and make a decision. Yeah, and, and again, I apologize. Well, why is that acceptable? Is, is it 30 days to make a decision? Charles, how does it read? We open the hearing on the 26th. The hearing is open. You, you're continuing the hearing to the, the hearing. But they want a decision by the 31st of July. To me, that short a deadline could only be detrimental to their case why do we because if we don't have any now? why do we have to even accept that that's mike that's my point what, we'll Mr. put Chairman, them in what charge application, what have we seen they've turned plans into the board into the office right incomplete uh, well but sir i have not gone and looked at them until the applicant sitting here we we have not had a formal presentation so why do we have to accept that can't we have town council just tell them look at we're accepting your offer to extend to june 26th but we're not putting a drop dead yeah, date that's, that's all i'm asking i mean that's Charlie, absurd I, that, 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 I think that's ridiculous unless they control the town which maybe they do <laughs> well they're asking for a decision for July 31st, and if our work isn't done, we have no option but to deny for Tell lack of information. And we go back to court again, that's all. Yeah, isn't that absurd? It I is, it's ridiculous, ridiculous, but. I mean, it might take 45 days. It might take 30 days, but it might take 45. Why would they put a drop dead date when they've asked, asked for an extension? The first hearing and a bunch of questions, and they're gonna come back. I think we don't accept it. Ask them for a revision. <laughs> I asked for a revision to the last one that gave us June 30th for a, and I got an explanation as to why he chose that date, but I didn't, he didn't withdraw the, uh, the date. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Thank you. Last week, uh, there was a meeting between town council, the mediator, and council for Bay Point. I believe Ken was there. I was, and so was Charlie. And Charlie was there. They came up with uh, a bunch of stuff back and forth that Charlie had presented. I believe the deal was they were supposed to come, and I don't know if you had the paperwork to see you'd have it, because you would have had it today, which would have been impossible for you to make any decisions just seeing it first time. So. I would think, Ken, you can probably go back to them and ask them to delay the, the 31st a little longer. Uh, see, if, see if they're amenable, all three of the lawyers, because that's what you've got. You've got a decision made by three lawyers that may have set well, up those dates. What uh, we have is a site plan review taking place behind closed doors that is not open to the public, and that's I understand that. I'm just saying that they had a meeting to d discuss things. And that was supposed to be presented to the board and go forward. But the problem is the time frames, if it doesn't work and the board's uncomfortable, then you can go back and ask Ken to sit and talk to the... For an the extension of time. And ask for an extension of time, that's all. They, my, may, they may have thought that that was fine. You know, I don't know. I, was, my, I purposely stayed out of the meeting. My request with the last extension was he phrase it that the clock start from the time we get an official presentation. Yes. And completed plans. Well, the, submission. you know, Ken could answer better than I can, but it might have been a unilateral decision for the date of July 31st. It may have not been a decision of the three lawyers. It was not a decision of the three lawyers. It was a unilateral decision by so Stone Street. Therefore, you can go back and say no. <clears throat> you can have Ken go back. You have, you have that option. Well, that, that's, I was only bringing it up, Alan. Uh, oh, it's no problem. I mean, because it's, it's, it's... That just strikes me as is we, what we went through with these people and then you went to mediation, blah, 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 and, and, and here you are, all the, the meetings you sat through, and they're gonna have the hearing open up, well, open, I understand, Mr. Chairman, but as far as whipping open the plans and, and make their presentation on June 26th, what if we have questions? It's two weeks later, all right? And then, and then what do you have? You have a few days to make a decision, 
according to this is ludicrous. So you just ask for a change for the I think final date. I mean, change, so. there's no reason they, I, I think the intent was when we opened was they could meet privately with Charlie and Ken to, to take care of the technical aspects but the site plan and the public hearing process would proceed. And, and that part of it's not happening. I mean, they could I'm, have done I'm them. I'm not sure that one side sees it that way. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess, I guess, can I ask the same question that Mr. Fitzgerald was asked? Is, are the plans complete, what they've submitted? They are, they are complete. They are to the point where there are some issues that need to be debated, I think, only by you. Okay. That's my opinion. Um, uh, the mediator and the two attorneys can put together anything they want, but it seems to me that it's still your board that yes. has the final say on whether or not you approve it. Um, so I, I'm inclined to agree with you that, that you need to be able to see what those things are. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, uh, a project such as that, I mean, we're, we're postponing this little guy's 7,000 foot building for two more weeks so we can all read the conditions clearly in print first. Why in God's name? What if what if what if a bunch of neighbors have some more questions and it goes into a second hearing night or a third hearing night? We're beyond the end of July, and, and he's going to say, "Oh, I'm walking away again. You, you you didn't sign my my approvals." I mean, it's it's crazy. You know? Like the selectmen said at that meeting that we went to when we sat there, and, and the two selectmen said, "Trust me, you're you're going to approve it." I approved it the first time. There's no guarantee I'm going to approve it the second time. I'm in favor of it, but I'm just saying, what if the, what if the, the, the things aren't happy for me? Then some of the fellows that voted no are now happy, but I voted yes, now I'm not happy. It's going to go to another hearing night, right, Mr. Chairman? Am I right or am I wrong? I, I think you're putting a gun to your head to be done by July 30th or 31st, whatever you said. You got a point, he's doing it. All right, well, that was my opinion, so this is my opinion. I, I don't know how much of this discussion there ought to be under executive session that begins to concern me a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not uh, under litigation at this point. It has been remanded back, so executive session doesn't apply. Okay. But part of the remand uh, was that the public hearing process would take place and that the planning board would be responsible for the decision. Well, there's, as I say, I think there are certain parties involved that think that the mediation agreement was the end all to everything, and that once the plans were submitted and Ken and I said that, yeah, they're in, in compliance with a submittal, that the submittal is complete, that that's all it takes. And I, I tried to try to make the point, no, you, you've still got a public hearing process to go through for the definitive plan as well as the special permit. And you get the, to do that because it was a brand new plan. And um, I'm pretty sure that one side doesn't see it that way. Okay. I'll agree with you. I would, I would recommend that you accept the extension, the continuance of the public hearing, but not with other, other further condition of restriction. So you continue the public hearing to June 26th. So, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that the letter from Winnica, Cirque, and Rosenberg, PC, dated May 3rd, for the continuance for Bay Point Country Club to um, June 26th at 7 p.m., uh, that we accept that uh, continuance, but we do not accept the July 31st deadline. Did he request in that letter the 31st of July? Well, it says, it says that uh, uh, continued from May 8th to June 26th at 7 p.m. Uh, hereby waives compliance with the time requirements set forth in the Zoning Act and the Subdivision Control Law pertaining to the close of the public hearings and the filing of the board's decision at the town's clerk's office, provided that said decisions are so filed on or before July 31st, 2017. So I would just make a motion that we continue accept the continuance letter from May 8th to June 26th for the public hearing letter. Strike. I think in, in doing it that way, you'll be yeah. giving them an out as to 
whether they granted the continuance or not. I think you should just accept the letter as it is, and if we can't get our work done, they will either have to extend or face a denial. Don't agree with it, too, Judge. Because, because mm -hmm. the, 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 these guys in the past have shown their credibility isn't what they say. And uh, I, I don't, don't agree with you, George. I agree with um, John and company. Get rid of that last half of that well, paragraph, scratch it, no way. If they this, don't want it, this so. continuance is being given provided the decision is placed on that date. So I don't think you can accept half of the letter without giving them an out on the continuance. Nah, tell them shove it. <laughs> you, Which, you if have you had continue. no continuance today, you, you have a have continued hearing date till the 26th, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. You can debate it with them that night as to whether or not well, you want to that's my point. If we can't, if it looks like the work can't be done by July 31st. I'll either have to extend it again or face a denial. Yes. You got you to tell them that right out straight. You know, we've, we've, we've granted extensions before and come back the next day for whatever reason, the extensions got retracted. I mean, th these people are untrustable. You can't trust them. You can't trust them. All right, well, Mr. Chairman, according to our agenda dated May 8th, Section 5, Continued Public Hearings, Number B, Special Permit and Definitive Subdivision Bay Point. The applicant has requested a continuance until June 26, 2017. I make a motion that we grant that continuance until June 26, 2017. Hasn't that been done already, John? No, I withdrew my motion. No, but hasn't the continuance to the 26th already been done? No. Not voted on? No? no, we haven't. They They've have requested it. And, the, oh, oh, okay. and what was the reason that we couldn't take the meeting in between? Was, they, they wanted additional time. They're the ones that asked for the extension. That's correct. No, no, they, it was a joint decision amongst the council. Right, but we had to wait for the letter drafted by Syracuse to request that, right? That's what we're doing right now. Well, I, I disagree. I withdrew my motion on the letter dated May 3rd. I made my mind off the agenda that we have in front of us from the way I'm planning for the agenda. B, they are requesting a continuance until June 26th. I'm, I'm going with that. And the deadline is there's also, I think that's the second, they're both on there. <sighs> I'm going under Article 5. You're, you're now down under Article 7. The No. To accept it? As written? Okay. And we'll discuss it on the 26th. Primary purpose is to make sure that we're locked in and we have a date, which is not going to be two days after the hearing, but it's going to be July 31st. Just making sure it included all of them. Special permit, site plan approval, and definitive subdivision plan. So, can I get a second? Is that is that possible? The July thirty first won't be a dead deadline date. 
It is possible because you have meetings in between June 26th and July 31st. No, that's not what you're voting on. Yeah, it will be possible to work with the applicant, request extension if needed because the public hearing goes longer, or are they going to hang their hat on it and force us to make a decision we don't want to make? I mean, I, it, would, it would be a decision they don't want you to make either. So well, that's well, then you're just going to be back where you started. Okay. They had a, they had approval the first time. They don't want to hear a denial the second time. So. In an effort to keep this going, I'll second that motion because I've had enough. <laughs> Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Abstained? It's 3 2. Uh, in favor of accepting the continuance. Did we vote on the uh, Shallow Furnace Road? Is accepting? Do we need to? You should accept a withdrawal of the application. Could we ask for clarification to know if it's a temporary withdrawal or a permanent withdrawal? Does that matter? It doesn't matter at this point. It doesn't matter, Mr. Tom. We, we don't have to take no. it with like without prejudice or anything like that. Just okay. We can come back in and reapply. I make a motion that we accept, Mr. Chairman, the, the Shallow Furnace LLC, uh, the applicant's request to withdraw their application. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Uh, Fort, Fort Fairfield is still on track for the 23rd? Yes, it is. Come, that's, oh, that's May a whole 20th, month away. May 22nd, right? Oh, May 22nd, the definitive is on the 23rd. Thought we were doing them. The uh, decision is on the 23rd, July 23rd. Oh, deadlines. I'm sorry. I missed the deadline. That's the normal deadline. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they send the check in yet, Ken? It's in the mail. <laughs> I'm just waiting to hear I, I, whether I or not it's I don't in. recall. Okay. So I'll have to check on that. All right. Excuse me. And that's all I have on the agenda for this evening. If anyone has anything else, then I do. I would ask that uh, the town planner send us all the specifications relative to building design so that we can have an open discussion about it and hopefully avoid things like we've been doing to these last applicants in reference to design. We, we have a architect on the board now, we have a town planner. That's a qualified town planner. I think it's high time we stop accepting this type of property. You know, you're looking at this with a, I mean, just Steel. 12, two and a half pitch um, steel building. You know, if this is what the town wants, which I doubt it, we should all just still sit here and just let these keep going through. But as a town resident, I'm speaking now, this is deplorable and unacceptable, and it's up to the town planner and us to stop this and fix this and implement the guidelines and tell every applicant about the guidelines. And I've said it before, but it's not being said by the town planner's office to the applicants. And I know it's not his position, but in some ways I feel it is his position to let people know this type of well, structure is unacceptable. When, when you read the architectural guidelines, you'll, you'll understand. I know, but, but we can still enhance those we we can ask for more and we should accept more and ask for more and john's a commercial construction expert he knows metal, better metal. yeah he knows better than anybody about you know a 12 to two and a half pitch building yeah, it's, it's, it's going to look like a skating rink and it's across the street from someone's house and this is totally unacceptable and that's what we're getting from every applicant yeah, because we accept it's, it. I, I got you. And, you know, and, and we let the applicant tell us tonight, well, it's, you know, the buildings around it are like that. What was done before was done before. Right. And, I mean, if, if you're all proud of living in a town where you see a mismatch of steel buildings and 
debris everywhere, then it, that's up to you. The zoning, the zoning bylaw talks about the facade of the building and, and certain elements to do on the face of the building as you look at it from the street. But if you're looking to get other details in there that, uh, such as what you addressed tonight or, or what you would like to see, you need to adopt additional zoning requirements for the commercial zone. That's the only way that it can be done. You can't demand of that applicant or anybody else to do something that goes beyond the bylaw. The bylaw has to be more specific. I think he can do it. And I think Emmanuel, and uh, he's, he's probably got some good ideas that he could put together. But unless you do it through the adoption of the zoning bylaw, you're not going to be able to enforce it, Mike. The other option is to include design guidelines. And, and those are something that, that have been done for onset. You'll find those in the zoning regulations, more specific criteria for architectural features associated with the buildings. Mm -hmm. You could do the same thing for the commercial districts. Right now, you don't have that same kind of specificity. But it has to be. And you'll, you'll be able to read that through. And if you want to have something additional. But does that have to be approved by town meeting? Yeah. Design guidelines would be different. It could be rules and regulations of the. So it doesn't have to be approved by town meeting. Correct. Yes. Well, there's only five on this. Well, Natural think... materials are preferred, such as wood, masonry, stone, stucco, glass, terracotta, tile, and metal. What's left? <laughs> I, I agree, uh, uh, if I may. Uh, the reason I, I have a passion for the, I have a passion for the town, and it's the reason I joined the board, and thank you for, I hope I wasn't out of line tonight. No. But, but we, we and they, the applicants, owe to the town. Give me two minutes. I was born on, on a, one of the most beautiful islands in Greece. Greece, you may, I know you're aware of, but it has thousands of miles of coastline. For the Greeks, the law is for the other guy. And since tourism took off, every Greek that owned the property on the water did whatever they wanted, so that today Greece's coastline is terrible, except for a few places that were you know, kept in families. When the citizens themselves don't take effort to protect their environment, and you're gonna get chaos. And I think they have a responsibility to provide, to present to this board something more than this. This is terrible. Uh, we should not tell, they asked us, tell us what to do. No, 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 you go back to your designer. Our concerns are scale, proportion, materials, you know, the visual impact, and go back to your designer and have them come back. I guess we don't have, the, the board doesn't have the authority yet, but putting together a set of guidelines, and I talked to Ken about it, I'd love to work with you to come up with something that we can enforce, that can be enforced. But I just felt very inadequate in, my, in what I said to them tonight, because I, they could care less, I think. They just want to put up the metal thing. Uh, would you like to have that thing across from your house? see it. And Wareham continues, or I, I've been a Wareham person for 40 plus years, but a resident in the last year, and I have seen this, what I think is a deterioration. And hopefully this board, if we can, I'd be happy to give my time and come up with, with Ken's help with a guideline that you all can approve and we can put into the, into the, into the statute. Uh, my other experience with guidelines was Nantucket. We did a uh, 100 house development there. Uh, we had to put every window detail, every color, every door detail before the historic district commission. And Nantucket is a charming place today because of that. So could we not in Wareham have something like that, that when an applicant comes before us, they have the fo we have the force of law to say, you can't do this. Uh, thanks for listening, but I, I think it was a terrible product that they, they want to put up in the town. You can do that, too, when you have the historic district and stuff, and you have the historic districts that can't get me affected. 
So when you get outside the historic that's what, that's what we could But you about. still have to have standards. I'm not saying that. Well, I'm saying we that. have no standards yeah. except in this. this. This conversation took place when Ken Weldon moved down on 28. Well, that's when it first right. came yeah, up. But, but we're still accepting it. And, and, you know, I'm not pointing fingers at anybody, but let me tell you something. You're going to look at this until the day you die. And I hope it doesn't turn out to be what I expect it to be. And I hope no one ever gets hurt trying to get in and out of this property. Because this property was wrong. plans put in place as a guide. The master plan gets done, gets put on the shelf, and it stays in and collects dust. That's not the way it should work. The master plan gives everybody direction where you want to go. It's you know, everybody's fault for not following the master plan. Yeah, the master plan. So we contracted for the master yes, plan. Yes, Tonight? We went through that so one in the last one. So, so, though, if Manuel, if you can get with Ken, you come up with some architectural Input and stuff like that. I'd love to. We can build on it and get it into the into the book. I'd be happy to. Mike, you're absolutely right. We're going to get space buildings. That's all they're coming. Why do we accept them? Well, we, you, you know, you have no choice right now, Mike. I don't. I don't agree with you at all, Charlie. You do well, because opposite ends of the spectrum. There's so many things we need to look at that we are not looking at. I, I understand that, but when an applicant that goes into Ken's an office, force an applicant to adjust their plan. If we all said tonight. As I see it, a safety hazard, that applicant would not be going out tonight thinking they're all set. They'd be looking at maybe we need to shrink this building down, we need to make it a little bit easier to maneuver, but we all keep just talking about it and we all keep wanting to be go along to get along. There are there are things that you can talk about that way and I agree with you 100%. But I mean, when it comes to the design of the building itself, I think you're in a different set of circumstances. And rather than, I, I think there needs to be something in the zoning bylaw that gives, gives the planning department or, or the planning board the opportunity to put some sort of general specification together. However, if it just becomes something that the planning board does, then the zoning board doesn't have to abide by it. Right. I think it needs to be set up side, in a general manner, I'm, I agree. You don't want to dictate the color. You don't want to dictate that it's got to be an eight by 12 window with six over six lights. You don't want that. But what you want to do is, is um, shape their thinking so that we get away from the tin building into more something which is a little bit softer and, and so forth. But you've got to be a little bit more specific in the zoning bylaw so that all the boards who have to deal with it know that they can pick that bylaw up in that's the Bible right there. But we also have to be realistic. We'll put together conditions, relative conditions for this app, and I hate beating on this applicant, but it was tonight, mm -hmm. that are totally unrealistic, unacceptable, and ludicrous. Well, that's well, that's part of property that's, this man wants to build. But that's part of your negotiation process. But that's different than than when you're talking about a building. You're talking about something different. I can remember when the the uh, theater went up. Mike, you were sitting on the board back then, and they brought in a building that had all sorts of neon signs and yeah. loops and everything else on the building. And I pointed to the commercial bylaw and it says you're in the commercial zone. You need to do your construction and consistent with the zone in which you are. And I pointed out to the residences that were around there, too. They did make some changes. It's what you see today. I'm not happy with it, but it is what you see. But I think there needs to be a little bit more specificity. Maybe not right down to the last nail and screw. But there's got to be something better in the commercial section than what is there today. And it'll, it'll help to do a, dispel a lot of this stuff. You, you won't get so much of what you're seeing. doors are 16 feet high. Bridges are 13 or 14 feet high. What kind of vehicle would, have, would they need? I, I can't imagine. Um, I'm thinking of, I know that the doors to the fire station downstairs, downtown are like 13 feet. They have to be 13 feet, the average height of a tractor trailer, motorhome, any of those high 
the vehicles is yeah. 12 foot 6 inches. Yeah. You need a 13 foot door. Yeah. I don't know. And those are the things that should be looked at in the beginning so that we don't keep repeating the same mistakes of our boards before us and putting steel buildings up where you could ask for something nicer. You know, I, I just, I'm very discouraged tonight. There are people living across the street from this building yeah. that this board, the majority of this board is, is going to accept. Let me tell you something. If I lived across from that building, I'd be way past upset. I don't disagree with you. But, so but you can't just demand it sitting on that side of the table. There's got to be something that you can point to because if it gets challenged, you're going to be ending up in the court of law again. It needs to be a little bit more defined, which I think can be done, and it should be done. I, I've been wanting to see something like that for a long time. I'm not saying we have to be in Nantucket, but we certainly no. don't have to keep accepting what we're accepting. That's, that's right, and there are ways to, to steer have, people away from that. And I know we don't have any, anybody in the town that has time to enforce things, and I understand that, but, you know. That's, that's why it's, it's much better if it's in the zoning bylaw when somebody goes into Ken's office to pick up, what are the regulations that I have to work under? What are my guidelines? I guarantee you, when I was working with my office, I went through the regulations and saw what was specified and what I could do and how much latitude I had. And I worked with what was there. And that's what the professionals did tonight. I mean, of course they, they do. And so you can't. I understand that, but you can't blame them for taking the bylaw and reading it and applying what they read. So that's why I'm saying that's where the changes need to be made. Is right there. It does mention banding the building to break yeah. up a, a large size. Uh, but it talks about a, it talks about a building that's more than 100 feet long. That's. Um, that's you know one thing that um, they could have staggered those something like that to, to well, break yeah, it up but a little bit. You, yeah, but you need to do a little bit more than design a steel building where you put all your footings in a line and you put up your steel posts in a line and you put sheathing on the outside and that's done. It takes more now, than that. Now, in the villages, you can't use a steel facade. You have to have a, you have to dress up the front of them. Yep. Why shouldn't it be that way in all districts? Not saying it shouldn't. You know, That's the kind of thing that needs to go into the zoning bylaw. Shingles, anything, a different treatment that there's dress a, it up. There's a place for a steel building. You know, oh, yeah. I mean, park. face it, with the cost of construction. In the industrial park, you still want some stonework and some decorative windows to make it look appealing. It doesn't have to look like a $2 steel box. Like a yeah, happy we, building? Yeah, we accept it on our main roads. What's that? Uh, it's in the com under we, the commercial districts. That conversation. That conversation. 760? 760. 760, Bob. You can't, you can't just accept it anymore. Oh, no. The, the thing is, we don't All have right. the tools to do anything with it. One more thing. Oh. I'll pass that down. Can we have a couple one more? more? When, when you look at the design guidelines in that architectural district for a commercial, it's tailored toward a commercial development such as um, Wareham Crossing. Something maybe not in that magnitude, but the same type. It isn't, it isn't tailored to the single building that's on a single lot like this one was that you were looking at tonight. So what I wanted to change is there. What I wanted to do was go over the, the mailing of notices. Uh, it's been requested by the town administrator that the, uh, the town no longer spends the money on, the, uh, on, on mailings uh, to the abutters notices because the account has been overrun by the number of mailings that have been done. Doesn't the applicant pay for that? The applicant does, but the money goes into the general fund and not into the account, the mailing account. So what happens is that budget line looks out of whack 
like a, like a snow plowing budget, you know. It gets out of whack when, when there's, there are too many mailings that come along or, or too much snow. So the, uh, the, uh, the request was that the town put the responsibility for the notices of mailing back on the applicants as it's been done before. So the proposal I had was this idea that the town would draft the notice to the butters because we also draft the notice for publication, which is paid for directly by the applicants. That the uh, proponent must submit the approval to butters list for a complete application. Uh, that's the one that gets approved by the assessors as meeting the requirements for the butters. Okay. And that it, the town then provide a copy of the notice to be mailed to the applicant and the proponent or the applicant mails the notice and then provides the green cards a return receipt before or at the hearing. That's the way it always used to be. <laughs> yeah, the way it used to be. Yeah. yeah. That's fine, right? Yep. I live with that. The results are the same. Okay. So do I need a motion on that? Just the motion. <laughs> Put the burden on them. I, I think the only reason that the department started doing it was, is it statutorily, is it our responsibility to mail the notice? No. Because I thought we were given that impression somewhere along the line. Because it used to be the applicants were responsible. And for some reason it changed, I don't know why. But uh, is that a motion to require applicants to be responsible for the abutters notification? Yes. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Abstain. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out was that we have a couple of, we have three major meetings coming up. Uh, one is the EPA workshop on coastal resiliency. Uh, this is next Wednesday and Thursday, next Wednesday night and Thursday as a workshop. Uh, if you can participate, I think it'd be worthwhile because we won't see probably too many other EPA programs in the uh, near term future under this administration that's, that's in place now. The other is that on May 31st, we have the Tremont Nail Factory presentation by the consulting team that was hired by Mass Development. This is going to be a, a presentation of the analysis that was done on the draft recommendations as well. And uh, I think it's, it's a very workable plan in the way it looks right now. And uh, support for its implementation will be kind of key. So if you're interested in Tremont Nail Factory, come on down May 31st. What are they planning on doing to it? Uh, <clears throat> a mix of uses, both retail, restaurant, uh, event space, housing. Uh, Contractor base. Well, they do have a metal <laughs> building on site. <laughs> With a low pitch. <laughs> Built a new one. And, and uh, then next, we have the, uh, the master plan vision update. The master plan is, being, is, is starting now. We're, we're tentatively scheduled for June 3rd to start the, uh, as a uh, Saturday meeting to uh, start the, the process of uh, creating the master plan update. I don't know how the board feels about Saturday meetings, if there's a, an opinion on those. We found them to be successful. Yeah, Saturday, Saturday in the summertime. That doesn't sound like a winner. <laughs> June 3rd, the kids are still in school. That's the first meeting. That's the first meeting. When is that June? What? June 3rd. June 3rd in the morning, two hours in the morning on June 3rd. Nine, uh, 
Will there be donuts? Do donuts, coffee, water? Beer? <laughs> no. And then I wanted to uh, point out that the, uh, the Zoning Study Committee had, had uh, presented to the uh, town meeting that there would be amendments coming up at fall town meeting. I think we've discussed enough tonight to know that there are a number of, of changes that are probably appropriate to the zoning. And so we should start on that process of public notice and, and advancing the, uh, the zoning bylaws amendments. Granny flats. Granny flats or accessory apartments. Yeah, that would be one of them. I find that term objectionable. <laughs> Granny flats. What'd you say? Sounds Granny flats. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like failed augmentations. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got to adjourn. <laughs> May 31st for the Fremont Nail Factory, 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Auditorium. Just as an update, uh, uh, Ken emailed me the other day, wanted me to uh, be aware that he had received a request for the assisted living facility at Rosebrook to have the security released because they've done everything. So in the next few days, I'm gonna make that inspection based on the uh, uh, list of items that had been put together. Uh, you've got a $90,000 bond, I think, that the town is holding on that. Uh, I went out there today, took a quick look, and there's a couple of little things that they need to fix up. But in the next few days, I'll be looking at that whole list. I'll write the report and Ken, if you want to put on the agenda for the next meeting, um, I'll have it ready for you so you'll know whether or not you can release it. What's the situation on the road? The road goes past there and then sort of just turns to gravel? It's just the way the plan was approved. Yes. How are you going to address that? Mr. Sirky said he was coming in to fix that a year ago. Circuit. That would be attorney circuit. Yeah, well, I think he said, well, he said he wanted to come in and he, and he hasn't responded to that. I think he was waiting to hear from us. And we never pulled out the plan and looked at it and made a decision. Maybe he'll say keep the night. I don't think so. Well, actually, it's not a cash bond. It's it's a performance bond, so it didn't cost him much to post it. But I'll be looking at that. I think we still need to address that issue. We've got the road that just sort of is part of the approved subdivision that's supposed to be constructed, and we've never said you know anything other than you know, you're supposed to do it. And if we don't want it done. I so all the uh, all the impact fees been collected for yeah I checked with the town treasurer and he said all the impact fees have been collected on this should be should be a tidy sum built up by now I'm also doing inspections over at the Aldi site which is at Toby Road uh, anybody that's gone by there has seen a lot of heavy equipment in there digging dirt and everything else. And so I've been checking groundwater, checking installation of structures. They're going to start the big infiltration system tomorrow, so I'll be down there again. I was speaking of Seth Toby Road, down at the end of Seth Toby, and in the intersection with Main Street, across from the, uh, the Target property there, is going to be the site of a solar farm done by Eversource. Oh, great. <laughs> it's as of right because it's uh, the power company. And June Colo's piece? The piece yeah. where the yeah. telephone poles were, was all cleared? Wait, yeah, wait. where it was cleared. <clears throat> wait, the yeah. 
It's on the right going down. Going down towards me. It's, it's the, right. uh, it's been the, one, the lot that was cleared and regularly floods now. <laughs> Entertain a motion to adjourn. I would. This Bob wants us to stay. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The meeting is